the end of time. Thirteen. O'clock. Hey, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Yep. Hopefully every everyone's having a good Wednesday so far. Yeah, I'm sick as a dog, so... Yeah, Tom is like... Yeah. So if he starts hacking his head off back there, he's, he's not going to die, I don't Mono think. Mono college kinds of medicine. He's... <laughs> yeah. we, had, we had to go to the DG, yeah. the DG, the Dollar General, Dollar General today, yeah. and get a big thing get of like cough, medicine. cough medicine. <laughs> I'm drinking... I'm drinking fucking rum, too, so that'll See, help. booze always helps, I think. Like, I don't usually get... Kill on those invaders with that. You get I drunk, know. It just kills all the invaders. I don't remember the last time I ha- was as sick as you are right now. Yeah. But it's been a long time. Just hacking and coughing. Because Tom keeps worrying. He's like, I'm going to get you sick. I'm going to get you sick. I'm like, don't worry about it. She doesn't respond to hardly anything, man. She never gets sick. Yeah, I hardly ever do. Like, and I always just say, ooh, I don't want to jinx it. But it's like, yeah. I was... Like, sometimes I'll get sick. Like, somebody will give me a cold or something like that. And I'm just like, oh, okay, I'm yeah. right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like... People are starting to pour in. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a good show tonight. Yeah, this is, like I said, this is one of those things that I kind of knew a little bit about it, like from school or whatever. <coughs> yeah, I learned about it at school. But the more you, like, look into it, the more interesting it is. Yeah, I, I remember uh, being taught about this in school. There wasn't just one children's crusade. There were several of them. And there was a bunch of other crusades that happened. But this was like, the children's crusades were the more mysterious ones. <clears throat> and we're going to get into them. Um... The problem is with when you're talking about things in, from antiquity. This is damn near early Renaissance, or no? And actually, this is more medieval. This era. is Middle Ages. Mid- Middle Ages. So. This is twelve twelve. Yeah. So a lot of things that happened, or were, or a lot of things that are recorded in history from this time and even before, didn't actually happen, or um, didn't happen the way that right. Yeah, yeah. I mean they even, wrote it. <laughs> pretty much. A, Pretty much everything we know about ancient Rome only comes from like two books, two and and two history books, uh, Suetonius and then uh, who was the other guy? I forgot what his name was. There's Antiquities of the Good Jews by Josephus, and I think there was another one. And they all contradict one another, and it's because histories were commissioned by rich people who were tied in with political families. And when you were writing history, you couldn't talk bad about any of their ancestors because that was your client. Yeah. And so everything pretty much, like they know the dates when things happened, say in Roman history, but how it happened and who was involved, a lot of that's fucking twisted. Uh, You'll have two different versions of it. So it was because it was propaganda back then. Yeah. I mean, you kind of have to have lots of different sources from lots of different places that all kind of triangulate on one thing, and then yeah. you kind of can cobble together what really yeah. happened. And some things just didn't happen at all. Uh, when I was a kid, we were taught that um, Marco Polo had led an expedition to China and dealt with, the, met the Chinese people and even the emperor and did a bunch of stuff, stayed there for a long time, and then came back and brought silks with him and uh, uh, the idea of noodles, and that's where the Italians got their Blue idea of noodles and all Just kinds kidding. of shit. That it was like Chinese. <laughs> no, uh-uh. all of the shit. No, history. Uh, Chinese history makes no mention of any kind of Marco Polo. They've never heard anything like that. The descriptions about China are all totally wrong in, in the story. The oldest version of the Marco Polo stories has dog heads in it, which were dog-headed people that people in the Middle Ages believed in. Has, has all kinds of mythological creatures ha- in the fucking story. And it's obviously a work of adventure fiction, the oldest version of it. It was That book got re- rebooted over and over again you know, because people liked it. it. Italians liked it. It got rebooted over and over again throughout the Middle Ages and even in the Renaissance, and it got more historicized as it went. I, th- I think the Italians believed that it happened, but it didn't happen. It was... And they, it was a story that became more historical as it went, uh, as it was rebooted. Well, could be that certain elements of the Children's Crusades and the Crusades were like that. It might have been political stuff involved, and a lot of it m- might have been exaggerated. And 
The more I looked into it, the more I think, like I said, I'm not a medieval scholar, obviously. But the more shit I read about it, I was kind of like, my suspicion is that something like it probably happened, but I'm sure it was like exaggerated and mythologized. Yeah, over time. As time went on. Well, and even at, even at the time, because some kind of even not quite contemporary, but like just a few years after, had already kind of started mythologizing it. And I'm gonna say too, like spoiler alert, I'm not entirely sure that there were two main kids that are like associated with this and they're not sure how old those kids were. So while they could be like children's crusade one, it's not officially a crusade because it was not sanctioned by the Pope. Yeah. Well, you know, and he was the only guy that could do that. And the other thing too, is that I kind of feel like there's a popular conception of it, that it was comprised entirely of children. And I doubt that that's the case. Yeah. Um, you know, it might have just been, I mean, there might have been kids in it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I don't think that it was just like all kids, like any, marching or anything like any that. Any history, any kind of European history that involves Christianity is kind of suspect because the church had their hands in it. Yeah, they and they um, have an agenda, obviously. An agenda. I mean, everybody has an agenda, but they had an agenda. Two a particular good agenda. examples from Roman history. You always hear that the Romans were feeding Christians to the lions in the arena. And also that Nero fucking uh, crucified all the Christians, and, uh, and and along the Appian Way, and blamed them for the for the fire that burned down Rome. Right. Yeah. There's no. There's no. Uh, history. Yeah, I'm pretty there, sure that's there, not there, true. There, there, there's no evidence for any of that. Uh, Rome was a was a secular country. They didn't care what your religion was, especially if you were poor, and Christians would have been poor. Poor people believed in all kinds of shit. The fucking and there's like whatever you're poor. Yeah, re, who yeah, gives a crap? Rich <laughs> Romans didn't give a shit what poor people believed because they were they didn't have enough money to re- worship Roman gods. To worship in a Roman temple, you had to be rich. You know what I mean? They were like mystery cults. They weren't for the everybody. They were just a select few. It's one of them exclusive and, yeah, nightclub kind of situations. Right. And uh, there's no evidence or nothing recorded in any kind of Roman history. That, that happened per se and in some cases it does seem to be in, in, injected into a book but then you find other older copies of the book and that wouldn't be in there so that means that some, that the church put that in there they added it they added that yeah sure. and they found You're one like stick that in there they found that one history thing. old history book that retells that same story about rome burning and that how uh the emperor i think I believe it was nero commended the christians for helping to fight the fire and right. that kind of sounds more plausible uh, yeah, I mean, some ancient Christian, you know, is writing it and goes, "Oh, by the way, they said the emperor said we did good for helping him out." Was, right. yeah, we had buckets and everything. Yeah, buckets and everything. <laughs> we were helping. Him. So, you know, so just because it's in history doesn't mean it's true, because they lied back then. Well, I mean, you and have then to afterwards, like afterwards over two thousand years, yeah. people are adding shit into the history. You have to consider who wrote it, and you yeah. have to kind of also who commissioned it, and you also have to go back to well, what's the oldest version we have of this? And then find a newer version and see if anybody added some shit, because they did. They did do that. What tends to come out on top in in European history is dates. Dates and names of people. Those are pretty consistent. What's inconsistent is motives. They're always painting motives on people, especially if it's like an ancestor of, of of an enemy faction of the guy who hired you to write this book they're gonna fucking throw shade you know yeah on their version of their telling of the history so you gotta keep that in mind when we're talking about uh especially things from the middle ages because the the church was fucking deeply involved yeah they had their little fingers and everything you couldn't say anything about the church or go against anything um you if you did you'd be in trouble so you kind of had to go along with what the church officially would sanction. Otherwise, they'd be like, "Where?" Yeah, like, yeah, no, we're not, we're not even that. No, they I'm would just, just say, you know, I mean, they, they did just say that, you're but... against the church, you know, and they, that'd be it for you. They 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 tell you to retract that, and if you didn't, they'd kill you. Yeah, that's what I mean. They just like mm. fucking let's let's burn them at the stake or whatever. Yeah. Mean. But uh, but yeah, well, but th- well, see, that was one of the things that I found most interesting about this. Um, was the kind of mythologizing, the possible mythologizing that went yeah. on. I do think that there was, because we'll get into 
kind of the context of the times and like some <coughs> other stuff that was going on around that time too. So I don't think it's crazy to think that there was, um, you know, a group of people that like were like, yeah, we're going to go to the Holy Land, like it's not sanctioned, we're going to do our own crusade. Like that's not crazy. And especially given the context of the time, which I'll get into, um, whether or not it was entirely comprised of children, that's another issue. And I'm not saying that there weren't children on the crusade, you know, there probably were. Yeah. They because have, I think there I mean, were, like, on the older ones, it, too. There, yeah, I imagine there may have been some adult chaperones to the fucking child's crusade. Sure. To, to crusade, too, if it happened. Yeah. Which, something like it may have happened. We'll see. I kind of feel like, and interestingly, I thought of this before I was, like, looking up some other shit about it. And apparently a lot of other people have made this connection. But um, the story of the children's crusade... I kind of feel like people associate it with the Pied Piper story a little bit, too, yeah. which kind of sounds similar. similar yeah. I mean, that was sort of based on a real thing, too, which I've been wanting to do a show about that. Uh, somebody asked me a long time ago like to do a show about that, and I think I have it in the list. I just haven't. It just hasn't won. But this has a similar flavor to it. Although, by all accounts, the narrative about this is that the, the movements were not led by an adult. You know what I mean? Now, whether the kids were as young as the story said they were, that was different. But in neither case um, was the leader of the crusade supposedly like a grown-up person, like leading children. You know what I mean? It's like a kid leading in a bunch of other kids is how the narrative goes. Yeah. Right. So, but That's we'll get into this. It, right. um, it, it always sounded fishy to me, and there's a lot of church-related European history involving people. It always kind of sounded... The story of Joan, of Joan of Arc always sounded very fishy to me. It reads a lot like... We should do a show about her, Yeah, too. It, it reads like... She's a fascinating uh, character. She's a fascinating person, actually. I do think she existed, obviously, but... I'm not so sure. Well, I mean, people they, did they, exist. People so. did exist, but they also falsified histories. Yeah, and that's the thing. And, well, that's what we're saying, and it's just kind of like when... When we say that, like, certain historical figures didn't exist, we, I'm not saying that they didn't exist, like, th that there wasn't a person named that or something like that. But then, like, sometimes, a lot of times, later on, stuff is attributed yeah, to them. Yeah, stuff that And story. our, our stories get confused and conflated, and, yeah. like, so they ha get attributed things that they didn't do, like, that yeah. maybe somebody else did. I think that was maybe the case with some of the Children's Crusade shit, too. Yeah, Joan of Arc just reads too much, like... Something the Christian church would have written. Some kind of Christian mythology or something. Well, they do love their martyr narrative. Yeah, it's like a martyr narrative. For and, sure. And, but maybe somebody was like that, named Joan, but I, it sounds like an exaggeration to me. But, you know, I mean, we had to do a whole show on that. That's why I said I wrote that shit yeah. down. Because I don't think she's on my list, honestly. Uh, Bob Apple said, were these children of all classes or was it all gentry? It seems like it was almost all poor people. Like I said, this seemed like, whether it was all children or not, it seemed like it was definitely a populist movement in the sense that it was like peasants, mostly. So whether they were children or not, uh, no one really knows. Uh, Camp Guy said religion is a control mechanism for society similar to government, more so in the past than nowadays. Yeah, I agree with that. It was all the same thing. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, the, the Phantom says, awesome dress, Jenny. Green suits you very well. Just saying, thank you very much. Yeah, I really do like this dress. I have a bunch of dresses like this in lots of different colors. So I have black ones and gray ones and dark red ones. Gold and black. Gold and black. I have all kind of different ones with different, like, skulls on them, stars on them. This one has butterflies or moths or whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, I like this one. It's, uh, this is from the Fairy Core collection. Yeah. <laughs> on Shein. So I have a bunch of these because they're, they're flattering, like, on everybody. So before we get too into it, let me give another shout out because I feel like I keep forgetting. I might have said it on the Sidetrack show, but I think I forgot to say it on last week's main show. And I like to always acknowledge people on the main show because I know some people don't listen to the Sidetracks and movie reviews. So I wanted to give a shout out to our newest patron, Stephen Vincent. So thank you very much. Thanks, Steve. Also, uh, we had one of our who person named Noah who was already a patron, and they increased their support uh, today oh, or you. yesterday. Thank so you. thank you very much for that. Um, as I said, most of y'all probably know, but we do have a 
Patreon. So if you want to support the show, if you don't already, uh, then it's you know every, anything is appreciated. You can give a buck if you want. It's, that's yeah, cool. and if you're listening to this recording, we can also you can, we we also answer all super thanks if you give us a super thanks. Yeah, I try to answer messages too, but I get like super overwhelmed because I'm like yeah. really busy. So a lot of times I don't have time. Sometimes I'll go in there and like like them. But yeah. like every like a, once every couple of weeks, I go in there and like go and go through all the messages because it's kind of a lot. Because I've yeah, two, we don't get all notifications. YouTube is kind of spotty about giving you notifications with so many comments. You yeah, I don't. Below. Yeah, I don't. I don't really get. Um, I yeah, I actually do get notifications. I don't most of the time. I never get notifications. Well, because if somebody, if somebody answers yeah. me or if I respond, I never get notifications. Yeah. Because I go through the questions and answer. I go through the uh, comments and answer yeah. too. Like I said, I try to, but it's like a lot of times I don't have yeah. a lot of time. But you know, there you go. Because I have two other channels too. So you know, I've got and man, I got to do another scare salon video soon. I got to do another top five from the next year, which I think is eight. Did I do eighty two last time? I don't know. So maybe it's nineteen eighty three this time. Top five horror movies of eighty three. I'm working on it. But I'm so like I said, I got to do a book review because an author sent me the book, and I still haven't finished reading it yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and get through some of it tomorrow and see how that goes. But yeah, so uh, we got that done. All right. So are you ready to get into it? Do you have yep. anything else you needed mm. to say? Some people were talking about food, but I don't know mm. if I want to get nah, too we much. Can't we can't go down that way. Like talking yeah. about because Zach was saying I had a burger with an egg on it, which is delicious, by the way. All burgers should have fried eggs on them. We just went to the cheap Chinese hoard today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the closer Chinese buffet. It's yeah. not as far, and it's like, especially during the week, it's like super cheap. <coughs> but yeah, this is the only thing is like it's pretty much all old people when you go in there. Yeah. And I know we're old too, but I mean, you know, like well, they're old, older than us. like old people, old people. But yeah, but it was pretty good. So because Tom was sick and he didn't feel like cooking. All right, so let's talk about what I want to do first because you kind of need some context for this so we're gonna talk about the children's crusade occurred between like the fourth and fifth crusades right around then so you kind of need a little bit of context leading up to it as to why it happened the way it did and the time that it did because i do think something like that happened like i said i don't but i don't think it's exactly the way it's portrayed in history. I don't think it was like a bunch of kids or anything like that. So the Crusades as a whole, obviously, were engendered by the Muslim takeover of the Holy Land. And that happened in 1071. Now, after they had taken it over, then Christians were not allowed to go on pilgrimages anymore, which was you know, that kind of pissed them off a lot because that's kind of how you went. You got to go on a pilgrimage and absolve your sins and blah, blah, blah. But you can't do that anymore because it's, <coughs> you know, it's under Islamic rule now. So they can't go. Now, they had the first ideas to do the crusades. Now, initially what they would do is they would recruit their crusaders from just regular ass people. They would go from village to village and somebody would go in the village square or whatever And they would give like this rabble rousing, uh, you know, kind of sermon, essentially being like, you know, we need to get the Holy Land back and, you know, you guys need to like step up and blah, blah, blah. So they would kind of give a pep talk. It was like a pep rally. So you go there and then they would recruit people. So they would take pretty much anybody um, at that point. Like it didn't matter if you were like an old guy or like a peasant or a teenager or whatever it's just like anybody that would go they're like okay well we need everybody to go now what i didn't realize until i was researching this was that the crusaders paid their own way on the journey you had to pay for all your and they didn't give you any shit they didn't give you anything so you didn't, yeah they didn't equip you or anything that no you just had to like either you had to buy your own you get to pay your own way like the journey you had to take if you had weapons or anything like that, you, they had to be, they weren't provided or anything. It was just a very ramshackle operation is what I'm saying. Um, however, a lot of people did do it because if you went on a crusade, then the Pope would absolve all your sins, right? Which is a big, would a big deal back then. Yeah, normally that would cost a lot of money. 
That's what I'm saying. Well, I mean, this does cost a lot of money because you have to pay all but, that kind but of. But yeah, it costs even more money to give you forgiveness sins. People now, forgot see, that you had to fucking pay. To yeah, forgive. well, man, the church had a good fucking church scam. Good I rack. mean, they still got good scams going yeah, now, yeah. but it's like that was a really good scam, and everybody yeah. fucking bought into it too. But the thing about it was that I wasn't clear whether if you went on the if you went on the crusade, would they absolve all your sins up to that point or all your sins in perpetuity? In perpetuity. See, probably. that's what I thought. Because you had to send your ass off through the crusade too. They did all kinds <laughs> of fucked up shit. They even there was cannibalism even going on. Yeah, I'm sure. In the crusade, yeah. Because people are the worst. I mean, uh, well, well they and were, they were starving. Yeah, they didn't. That's the thing. Is that they went off on these things and their whole mission was we're going to go and reclaim Jerusalem yeah. for Christendom. And they had to take their own shit. So it's basically like peasants and landed gentry and stuff like they would go to like merchants and whatnot. Um, and they would just go with fucking, I don't know, whatever weapons they had. It's like, hey, I got a shovel. You know what I mean? It was just that kind of shit. You could buy weapons along the way. Yeah. But it's like, you know, it was it, they would just recruit from like pretty much everybody. And a lot of people did want to go if they could afford it. Now, if you couldn't afford it, because like a lot of peasants would go too, like they would essentially, they would work for the wealthier people that were going on the on yeah. the crusade you know what i mean they're like, like oh yeah like squires and shit right yeah like i'll carry all your crap or yeah. whatever it's like so they could go along too because like i said that was a big incentive like to have all your sins because they're like woo i can just sin forever and like i'm still going to heaven all right which you know that was a big incentive back then i guess nowadays i'm just like mm, no nah, i'm gonna need a little bit more than yeah. that sorry <laughs> yeah, it's probably, it's probably a situation where if you were a peasant you also probably couldn't own i know they couldn't own swords I don't know if they could own other weapons. Yeah, I'm not, um, like I said, it might have been just like farm implements and shit. Uh, no, it might have been thinking, oh, axe, battle axes probably, mm. and uh, spears. Uh, but you, you probably got permission to become armed if you were on going on crusade, though. So that might have been kind of a uh, added incentive to go, because now you kind of have the status of a knight, even though you were a... Uh, peasant yeah it's that was like upward mobility yeah the, and i was just going to bring right. that up is that that was another big incentive was right. that they were thinking hey maybe i'm going to improve my lot in life it's not like they yeah. had a great life back where they were they're yeah. peasants they're it's peasants, yeah. in the middle ages the peasant for christ's was a, sake peasant was a slave essentially when you, when yeah you, when you bought land it came with peasants they were tied to it yeah when you know, which is that's some fucked up shit you got to stay here because you're on the deed yeah yeah so we own your ass thing. grow me some food yeah bitch yeah, it was like that. So that was, an, that was what I was just going to mention was that, um, you know, the prestige of it um, and the possible earning potential later on um, coming from that prestige of having gone on a crusade was also like a big incentive. Like I said, and it wasn't like they had some great life back where they, they were leaving behind or anything like that. It was just kind of like, you know. Probably pretty boring. Yeah, it's kind of boring and like kind of Cold winters crappy. Yeah. So Washington. they're just like, yeah, we're just we're going to do this. It's like adventure. So they didn't have any problem finding people to do it. Now, the first crusade, this, this kind of made me laugh. The first crusade was surprisingly successful. I don't think they were expecting it. I mean, I'm sure they all had faith and everything like that. And they kind of, the Pope got it together and all of that. And he's just like, yeah, go retake Jerusalem or whatever. And like, he sees this ragtag band of misfits, you know. And uh, he's just like, oh, shit, man, we're in such trouble. But they get there, and they won. And I, no one was more surprised than they were. Um, now, it took three years of them fighting, uh, the Muslims. But in 1099, the Christian forces did indeed take back Jerusalem. Yeah, it was Charles Martel. Wasn't he with them? Uh, it was Charles Martel. Oh, yeah, it might have been. He's yeah. a French knight. Yeah. Charlie the Hammer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's what the name translates to. Charlie the Hammer. Charlie the Hammer, yeah. I Charles bet. Martel. He probably also has a big ass dick. Uh, I think he was pretty fearsome. Well, and maybe he probably also had a big ass. Maybe, dick. yeah. <laughs> women, women fantasize. No, I'm not fantasizing. Yeah. I was just thinking about you earlier, like in the restaurant, saying that you, that we were gonna call you like test it. Testicules. Testicules. That's his Greek <laughs> Testicules. Testicules. That's my Greek name. 
Yeah, Hat Desert said no. That was before that time. The Charles what, Martel. Thing. What was that? Was it? I thought it was ten ninety nine. Charles Martel. I'm not sure. It wasn't mentioned in mm. what I was reading about. Oh okay. Um. So yeah. So like I said, it seemed like. So this little band of, well, it was a big band, obviously, of just random ass people, went down there and they won after three years. And I, some of them actually attributed their victory to supernatural forces. Not only the fact that, you know, they seemed to believe that God was on their side, but they also thought that there was angels fighting with them and that, like, the ghosts of their dead were also fighting with them. So there was that, too. So it was like, woohoo, we won. So the Christians actually held on to the Holy Land for 88 years. But because they were human beings, and this always happens, um, there was a lot of the, you know, some of the Crusaders were like, okay, we won, we're going home, like back to our farm or whatever. But the ones that stayed there um, started infighting about who was going to run the shit, right? Because that's what always happens. It was little power struggles and whatnot. So there was that. Now, the Second Crusade, which happened in 1146, this was, the, the Christians still, uh, you know, uh, occupied Jerusalem, obviously. So this one was, there had been incursions, you know, by, you know, there had been Muslim advances, obviously, because they want to take the shit back. So what they were trying, what this crusade was for was just to, like, to beef up, like, the Christian presence in Jerusalem and try to fend off the invaders, now, uh, this wasn't entirely successful. Like, the Muslims didn't take it back yet, but the, it pretty much descended into infighting, you know, uh, as, as it had done before, because yeah. they can't get along. God yeah, damn it. But High Desert's right. Charles Montero died in seven, uh, 741. Yeah, so this was he like... He was a Frankish king. Charles yeah, it was Hattel. a long time before this. Yeah, I thought he did He did some ses- successful campaigns, I think, against, against the Muslims, driving them out of France, I think. Let me see. Well, now, see, you have to look it up. I might have him just confused with somebody else, but you might, yeah. Okay, because like I said, I didn't bring it up because right. it wasn't mentioned in anything, and I'm sure that they would have mentioned him because he's like super famous. Yeah, Joseph. Uh, Joseph says Charles Martel won the Battle of Tours against invading Muslim armies That's in right. 732, 732 before the Crusades. Before, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. For 1099, that does that does stick stick in my head that date. I thought I associated with Martel, but. It was something else happened in 1099. Well, too. the first crusade happened. First crusade, probably yeah. That's I, kind of a big deal, like yeah, the Christians taking yeah. back Jerusalem right. for the first time in a in a while. For some reason, I thought Martel was involved in that, but no. No. Okay. Now uh, we will be having an appearance from Richard the Lionheart later on, but not Charles Martel. So uh, so yeah, so like I said, so the Christians are they're still holding Jerusalem at this point, but they're still like fighting with each other and whatnot. And then comes eleven. 87. The Muslim leader, Saladin, very famous. Saladin. Saladin. Yeah, yeah. Um, he whipped up a 30,000 man army. Yeah. And they were able to handily recapture yeah. Jerusalem in two weeks. Yeah. Saladin is a legendary uh, military commander, uh, <clears throat> especially amongst. Uh, the Middle Middle Easterners and Arabs, you know, they're fucking big fans of Sal- Saladin. He's kind of like their version of fucking King Arthur, basically, like that. Even though I don't think Arthur existed, but probably not. We no. did, I've been wanting to do a show about that too, but that's like super complicated. We need to get into that. I mean, it might have been based on a real dude, but I don't think he. I doubt. Really. It. I mean, I think he was just like mythological. Yeah, it's a, it's a legend. It's a legend. Everybody, Phantom says Tom is hung. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, got it on video. Prove it. <laughs> well, I think that's what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and Murder Hornet then pipes up and says, Respect where respect is due, Tom is well endowed. <laughs> These bitches. <coughs> Fucking faux funny, man. Funny. He, well, I mean, it's true. So, okay. you know, you don't have to be ashamed of it. Mm. <laughs> Knock a bitch out with it. Just smack him <laughs> yeah, Pat, he looks Charles the Hammer. Right he you. looks like okay. Pat. People Look, man, we got to stay focused. Stay focused. <laughs> What is uh, that's the first time fucking, you've ever this is serious this serious, is serious fucking, medieval history serious this is medieval serious history. fucking talk about Christianity now fucking act right and Islam yeah act right yeah we're talking about Saladin we can't right? help it we can't right. help it we're just like I said we're just natural smart asses yeah. I can't like take anything seriously ever so you know that's just kind of the way I am I'm sorry 
I apologize in advance. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Saladin showed a lot of chivalry on the fucking battlefield too. I was just gonna yeah, say he, he did that a lot of cool shit. one of the things that he did yeah. was that after the battle was over and they had reclaimed Jerusalem, he actually didn't kill any of the remaining Christians that were left over. He said, "You guys can go back home. And go back shit. home." <laughs> yeah. He did charge them a small fee if they could afford it. But if yeah. they couldn't afford it, he's like, nah, you can just yeah. go. So I thought that was pretty cool of him. Lifted some money off of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, told, I mean, why not? Yeah, he told him to go back home and go fix go fix your homelands because they're all fucked up. Which they were. Which, fair. Yeah. <laughs> fair. So he, yeah. Like I said, he seemed a pretty solid dude. Yeah. He pretty seemed a pretty solid dude. Like I said, he could have just, like, massacred him, but he didn't. He was like, nah, yeah, I can go home. He wanted good, good PR. Yeah. Now, so after this, after the recapture of Jerusalem. They believed in the same God, too. So that's basically... Yeah, I you, mean, you know. Just so, you know. So after this, this was a huge fucking deal across medieval Europe. And people went fucking nuts. They went like crusade crazy. So basically the same year that that happened, 1187, uh, Pope Gregory called for the third crusade. But he's like, yo, this time I want an army army. I don't want a bunch of old farts and teenagers and out of shape peasants with yeah. their farm implements that can't afford weapons like last time. Because we got our asses beat. Yeah. And we're going to do this the professional way. Like that was his idea. So and this time he's like, OK, and we're going to come in because normally like the, the Crusades before this had been like over land. They mostly traveled on foot or whatever. Um, he's like, we're going by sea this time, and all the soldiers have to pay for their own passage, like, on the ships. You know what I mean? Um, this crusade, incidentally, was led by King Richard the Lionheart. Uh, hey, he had about 800 guys. So they start going down there, and they start the battle or whatever. Two years later, though, Richard got sick, and he started worrying that his brother might take his throne while he was gone. So he's like, I need to fucking cut this shit short. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got shit to do back home. So he actually went to uh, Saladin and basically brokered a like an agreement. <coughs> like they negotiated down. He's like, okay, we'll let you guys go home. We're not going to hurt you. Nothing like that. Um, and tell you what, we'll even let the Christians come back to the Holy Land for pilgrimages as long as you come along this, like, narrow strip of land along the coast. Like, we won't fuck with you if you do that. Somebody's asking how you can order a, goth, a signed gothic, goth beauty poster. I don't know what exactly he's talking about. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Maybe he's, um, is he talking about the magazine gothic beauty or is he just talking about, does he want a poster of you signed? We can do that. I mean, we could do that. It might take a while for me to like, while, yeah. get it all set up. She, she can make anything. She has, we, you know, uh, we can print. Can we print that out in HD? Uh, should be. I'd have to go through my photos and yeah, see which one. Yeah, depending on how big you're talking to. Yeah, that's true. Also. Well, actually, we could just have it. We could send that to the print shop. Well, I'd have to because yeah. my printer doesn't print that big. We sell it by that. Probably about probably about fifty. Probably what that would cost. Wouldn't you think? Yeah, I would imagine. Probably about 50, like yeah. I'm not really sure. Like I said, I used to work at a print shop, but that was yeah. a while back, so um, I don't know what drop, the rates are nowadays. You could you could drop her line at, uh, what, um, Instagram or Facebook? Just yeah, or, or should I even say my email address? Like, gravecake yeah, at gmail email. at gmail.com. Yeah, gravecake, gravecake at gmail.com. Gravecake gmail. gmail yeah, it's all lowercase, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it, yeah. It, it doesn't matter, actually. So, yeah. Um, so it was kind of like, obviously the Muslims still held Jerusalem at this point, but if the Christians wanted to go there for a pilgrimage, they were like, all right, you can still come here. As long as you take this little narrow strip of land, like along the coast, we won't fuck with you if you do that. And then you can come in here and pray and then go away. You know what I mean? So that was like the, the deal that they came to. So again, this was considered not necessarily like a complete failure but obviously they hadn't taken jerusalem back so it was kind of a failure a little bit so in 1198 uh pope innocent the <coughs> third called for a fourth crusade now according to most scholars innocent the third was the most 
crusade crazy of all the popes and that's kind of saying something because a lot of them were like super into doing crusades man but he was the one that was just kind of like crusade this and crusade that he was like all about it um and he also adhered to the uh soldiers only please rule none of these peasants and old people and none of that kind of stuff right so he's like we're gonna do it professional like just like the last guy did now i will say so they did that so they set up the fourth crusade the fourth crusade was also a clusterfuck um essentially it was hijacked they ended up in constantinople and battles broke out with other christians and none of them even got to the holy land at mm. all didn't want their army moving through their, through their territory probably so did, did, was there a reason given why i'm not entirely sure like i said i didn't look too much into it because you know situation. that's just this is kind of just like set up for probably the children's just, crusade but probably just common sense shit local kingdoms not wanting fucking ar armies walking through their territory it could be a trap right so they're just you know probably the shit like that it's real difficult even in modern era to project land power you know? yeah and back then i'm it's, sure it was like then, nearly impossible no, especially without telecommunications you sent them out and they had to get to the destination on their own and they basically had to forage if there were any supply problems they were fucked yeah they had to feed themselves as they went yeah, it wasn't like they had supply lines or anything yeah. like that. And honestly, like, even back then, like, even the popes were aware when they were sending people out on, uh, you know, on crusades, they were just kind of, well, once they set out from here, it's a crapshoot. Yeah, you don't know if you'll ever <laughs> We don't know what's going to happen. You don't even know if, you'll, if they'll ever be back. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, because you don't, anything could happen. Yeah. Anything could happen. This is the Middle Ages. Like I said, they don't have supply lines. They don't have telecommunications. They don't have anything like that. Yeah. So... They, you know, it, so it was just kind of like they, they had no idea what was going to happen. I just, they were just like hoping for the best. No way to call for help or reinforcements or anything. Yeah. I mean, there really wasn't. And shit like this happened all the time. So, yeah. So again, Fourth Crusade, clusterfuck. So after that, around this time period, like I said, this is right around the time period, a little bit before the Children's Crusade thing happened. So... It was because of the failure of the Fourth Crusade, largely, that I kind of feel like religious movements, like populist religious movements, like the working classes and the poor and stuff like that, kind of started to spring up. Um, because the thing about it was that every time the Pope, like, announced an official crusade, then... You know, there'd be all these little populist movements where, like, you know, where people would be, like, all amped up about it. You know what I mean? And they'd kind of do their own little shit. Because everyone is excited about it. Woo, we're going to fight the infidels or whatever. So it's just kind of like they'd kind of form their own little groups and whatnot, even if it wasn't, like, officially sanctioned. So anytime something like that happened, there was, like, a lot of excitement about it. And, like, a lot of preachers <coughs> would come through villages and, like, talk about it and stuff. So... Uh, so, so every time that would happen, there'd be like this big, these big upswells of fervor, I guess. And I mean, shortly before the Children's Crusade started, um, you know, in late 1211 and early 2012, there was the Albigensian Crusade that was against the Cathars, uh, in southern France. Very mysterious people. We don't even know if they actually existed. Yeah. Nobody knows what they believed in either. Mm. It was some kind of Christian. They had yeah. trapped up on, on a mountain eventually. I guess there was some kind of castle that they were in or fortified. Yeah, something that's like that. That's the last they were heard of. There's no real proof that the Cathars existed either. Just no trace of them. But maybe they did. But when nobody knows what they were. That might also be That might be a good show. Figure out who the Cathars were. They're just mentioned. <laughs> but no details given. Yeah. At least when I heard about that. And that was several decades ago. Maybe they found out something since then, but... And then, like, also a little bit before that, there'd also been a Muslim invasion uh, in 1210 that came from North Africa. And that, like, um, they took a castle in uh, Spain. And so that was the thing. So there was kind of a lot of this kind of stuff going on around this time period. And because of the excitement around crusading, there were a lot of, like... Um, 
gatherings and processions and stuff like that in various towns where they're kind of like trying to drum up support and stuff. So there were processions in Rome and yeah. um, there was one in, uh, in Chartres in France. And it's thought that this procession was maybe what spurred the boy that was at the heart of one of the children's crusades to maybe want to do this shit. However old he was or if he really existed or whatever. This period was weird, man. There were like these moral panics. and People would cluster together in big groups and just walk around and wail and mourn and fucking cover themselves with ashes and shit. You know what I mean? Because they thought the world was ending. It's just there's weird moral panics happen during this Yeah, time. I mean, it's still happens now, so yeah. we can't shit too much on medieval people because <laughs> people are just as stupid way. nowadays. Yeah. <coughs> Lots of virtues. And nowadays sibling. they don't have any excuse <laughs> like right. back then they did. But. Lots of moral panics and virtue signaling and fucking showing everybody what a good person you are because you're doing this and you're willing to die for it. And, uh, it's just, you know, I think a lot of it had to do with just mental illness. Dancing diseases. Where people would just dance, I mean, think how shitty their day to day life was, yeah. though. It's right. like anything that was like a break in that yeah. grueling routine yeah. would have been like a vacation. Because no you concept, can't take a vacation. There was no concept of politics either. If you, you were just living under the yoke of some fucking monarchies, so they were kind of dehumanized and they, they weren't educated. And they lived in a very harsh environment. Uh, just bad sanitation, bad food. So they were under a lot of psychological pressure whether they knew it or not. So they'd just start acting out. They'd act crazy. You know? Yeah, and it's not surprising, and, really. Because yeah. they wouldn't be like, hey, let's get together and have a protest. That shit came later. Yeah. When uh, And actually started, a lot of it started, or some in Germany, you know, <laughs> fucking uh, you know, Martin Luther was fighting the church. And then in, in, uh, in England, eventually they started the... the the uh, kind of like traditions of holding the king to account of some shit that he did, you know, that was an alien concept. Yeah. In his time, you know, wait, a minute, you're gonna hold the king responsible for something he did? Fuck yes. What kind of shit is that? He's just a person. Yeah, you know, he know. wipes his ass like all the rest right. of us. Right. Well, they didn't think that back then. They I know. Divine rule that they were the kings because God said so. Fuck that noise. You know, I do not think like that. It was at like all. that up to the 1700s too. I know. Yeah. That kind of blows my mind a little bit. I mean, like I said, if you grew up in that... Well, see, that's what I mean. It's like, if you had grown up in that time period, that's like all you know. Yeah. But I still... I know that there were people in those time periods that didn't believe that shit because some of them wrote it down. Yeah. So it's like everybody wasn't going along. Some of them go along because it's like, well, I got to go along because I'm going to get my fucking head well, chopped some of off them if were I say anything. Some of them yeah. were Some other ones weren't. But people, there, there were times in the, in the medieval period where there were just brilliant areas. Areas where fucking... It was great, almost utopian. In other places, fucking not maybe a few weeks away, they're burning people at the stakes and doing weird shit like that. It's like two different worlds happening at the same time. Yeah, it was kind of crazy. Yeah. Kind of dependent. Best place went. overall over time during this period would have been somewhere around Venice, Italy. It was a little bit better than other places, you know. England was a fucking backwater during this time. <clears throat> Camp Guy brings up the Ken Follett novel, The Pillars of the Earth, a great book. I agree. I, I read it a few years back, and that is a fantastic book. It's set during this time period. It's not about the Crusades, but it's about uh, the building of the great cathedrals. Yeah, if you haven't read it, it's really, really good. It's really good. It's a fascinating fucking novel. It's like a, it's a chunker, but it's like it's really, really good. Um, let's see. Now they're talking about. Uh, yeah, CB said back then they gutted you just for your beliefs. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, life was cheap, really. I kind of feel like the conception of everyone's unique and everyone's life has meaning and stuff like that was not really a thing. No. Until fairly recently. They were psychos. Yeah. I think pretty much all of them. I mean, it does kind of seem like that. Yeah. They were feral, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they still had recognizable human traits, obviously, but the way that they lived and the way that life was, they just didn't... <clears throat> They didn't have the luxury of, like, <laughs> higher thinking processes, Jenny, I guess. Yeah, Jen, Jenny, uh, brain development wasn't too good either. I imagine, you know, if you're, if you're poor and you're raised in that environment, you just don't really blossom that much. Jenny had a book called, what is it, The Angels of Our Better Nature? Was that, was that what it's called? The Better, and, yeah, and, The Better Angels of Our Nature. Yeah. And Stephen Pinker wrote it. Yeah, and, and they, he mentions uh, medieval era and just the weird shit I that they I need to reread that book. It's actually fascinating. They were cruel, too. Real fucking cruel. 
Yeah. Well, they, it they seemed like they were all funny. like serial killers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, like, re- like reading about their thought process, I'm like, so they all sounded like serial yeah. killers. Like they had no empathy, they had no nothing like yeah, that. Yeah, there'd be like people in the crowd fucking just laughing over some torture that they're doing to some dude. They're just laughing at what funny how funny it was. And then they just grabbed that dude who was laughing and put him in there and everybody would think it was even funny awesome. watching that that guy is fucking and he didn't do anything wrong. He was just laughing too hard, you know. Okay, see what you they put him in there and then everybody think it was even more funny. Oh, uh, they're killing an innocent guy now. That's awesome. That's fucking hilarious. You know, it's just they were put the baby ruthless. up there next. Yeah, put the baby up there. Yeah, yeah. They, they were fucking get in a feedy then frenzy. Then let's eat it. Yeah, yeah were, it, I were, mean, it was that kind they of They were thing. in a bloodlust, a feedy frenzy, you know? Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's just. That's kinda... why I stay away from large crowds. Well, I mean, look. Like, large crowds are fucking stupid. Look, I love horror movies, and I will laugh at fake murders all day long. Mm-hmm. Like, especially if they're real yeah. bloody and, like, real creative and stuff like that. But I don't want to see the real shit. That's, like, fucking yeah. disturbing. Yeah. I make a distinction between that. Yeah, and prior to this, and during the Roman era, they were talking about the Germans, which was just you know basically all of Europe was Germania that that or Germania, whatever Rome didn't control. They said they were just fucking savages that believed in all kinds of fucking superstitions and were just wicked, human sacrifices and stuff. So the Romans had them right. The Romans knew yeah, what they were like. Yeah, I mean, you know, after the empire kind of collapsed. Those savages ended up fucking kind of picking up the pieces of Rome and starting to make their own version of it. Some better than others. Probably the best ones after the Romans would have been the fucking Visigoths. They were pretty good. Pretty cool. I'm going to rest them. CB said, if I lived back then, I would be fucked. Yeah, me yeah. too. Big time. I wouldn't last five minutes going back in a time machine. Not that if, look, if I invented a time machine, I would never in a million years go back to that. No fucking way. Like I said, I wouldn't last five fucking minutes. Just doesn't sound like much fun to me, you know. It's not like all Ren Fair or nothing like that. It was dirty and gross. Everyone was covered with lice and poop, and no thanks. <laughs> Everyone like had diseases, and they just, uh, you know, most of them couldn't read, and it just doesn't sound like a good time. Doesn't sound like a good time. I mean, I've read. Look, I've like I've read stuff from the Middle Ages. I've read stuff from educated people in the Middle Ages and from you know ancient Greece and ancient Rome and stuff like that. And honestly, the educated people sound almost like modern people, but most of the people back then were not educated. So if you were just like dropped in the middle of some village someplace, yeah, you would be in big fucking trouble. And they would probably like like you said, they would just fucking string you up and think it was hilarious. So, okay. So, because of the failure of the Fourth Crusade, I kind of feel like at this time period, and because there were some other kind of crusade-related things going on at this stage, um, there was kind of a widespread sentiment, or like a growing sentiment, I guess it was, that people were like, look, the First Crusade, which was just a bunch of randos that you just kind of recruited from villages or whatever, Um, you know, any Tom, Dick, and Harry that wanted to join could join in the First Crusade, and they won. And then the subsequent ones, where you tried to get all professional with it, with warriors and stuff like that, they all pretty dramatically shit the bed. So because the Arabs were ready for them. Yeah, I mean, you know, but I'm just saying that 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 was kind of the overarching feeling in medieval Europe. The first one was probably a shock. It kind of had an element of surprise. Well, yeah, and the funny thing about it is that um, there are uh, records of, you know, Muslim leaders at the time who wrote down about, they couldn't believe it. They were just yeah. like, what the fuck? Yeah. No, so it's crazy. Uh, yeah, so it was, like, very surprising to yeah. them. So, like you said, and it was surprising to the uh, Crusaders as well. They were like, holy shit, we won? All right. Yeah. We didn't expect that to happen. But, um, but yeah, so it was a surprise all around. But, um, but, yeah, like you said, I don't think anyone was expecting it, which probably was a big uh, factor in why it succeeded. But, you know, subsequently, you know, whether it's true or not, I'm sure it's like a lot more complicated than that than that. But I I feel like a lot of people have the perception that, well, the first crusade that was just a bunch of random ass motherfuckers with farm implements, they won and held Jerusalem for 88 years. Um, meanwhile, like the later ones where you try to retake it. I didn't realize that there was 88 years. Yeah. Um, oh, that long? I thought, I yeah. thought it was a couple decades. Nah. 88 years. Yeah. That's, so it's like, that's a success. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like that's, I said, the first a crusade was a, was a, yeah, was that's a like success. Yeah, like three generations. Yeah. But then like later on when they were just like, oh no, we can only have like actual professional warriors and soldiers and stuff yeah. like that. Then they always failed. 
Yeah. So people started thinking, well, maybe we should go back to, you know, just having random ass motherfuckers again, because that seemed to be like pretty. So so around this time period <coughs> was when all of these kind of populist, working class, poor people started kind of like upright and doing their own kind of you know uh crusade type taking activities matters in their own hands. right because they thought yeah. well here was the thing it was kind of a big thing in medieval christianity and kind of still nowadays although i kind of feel like now there's kind of that whole thing where if you're rich then god favored you and blah blah but back in the medieval era there was a overriding sentiment that if you were poor you were possibly more favored by God. Yeah. Christianity supports like that. Like humility. The, right. The meek, what they're yeah. Calling. That's what I mean. So that was kind of a big thing. So I kind of feel like a lot of people started feeling like, well, maybe the reason that these professional, you know, uh, outfits going on the Crusades haven't succeeded is because it was all, there was money behind it and it was all professional and planned and stuff like that. Maybe God is pissed at that and he just wants like regular ass poor people to kind of go do it, and then he'll help us out. Yeah. So I kind of feel like that was the sentiment at that the time. That was a fucking medieval version of fucking intersectionality. We're poor. God favors us more. You know what I mean? Fucking, we're, we, <laughs> fucking the rich people, they, they don't, they're, they're not down with God the way we are. You know, well, yeah, and I, out for us. in the early days, I kind of feel like person. that was a big thing. Like yeah. nowadays they have the prosperity gospel yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. other kind of stuff where, you know, a, a lot of these kind of... Um, televangelists and stuff like that kind of turn that around in their head. It's like, no, God loves us best because we have all the money. Um, so look at my Cadillacs and my gold plated yeah. shoes. Yeah, and if or you whatever, love God, you will get ever. money. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like, and another thing too is that they would tell you, it's like, look, you have to like, even if you don't have the money, you need to send me the money and then because then money. God will reward you for sending me the money when yeah, you didn't right. have any money. You gotta grease those palms. Yeah. Greasing the palm of the Lord. Did That's that work out for it. people? You must it grease did not. the palm of the Lord. Give me some money and it'll come back to you ten times over. And then, yeah, uh, did that, that that's happen? Not how it works, though. No. <laughs> the guy that said that has like five mansions, yeah. though, yeah, and a Rolls Royce and, like I said, a yeah. Well, uh, prosperity gospel is is that God loves you. God wants you to be rich. Mm -hmm. God is rooting for you to be rich. And then once you fucking get a, get a good wad of change, you can snowball that into being the richest motherfucker. You know, just like the dudes in the old temp old old. Testament, you know what I mean? Just that's what they're talking about. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but it, it's actually a pyramid scam. No. Well done, but I'm so, <laughs> well. The thing about it, in a way, I'm not gonna. I don't want to give them any more encouragement than they, uh, you know, already have. Obviously, yeah. but it's just kind of like whoever came up with that, like turning Christianity, like you know, the classic, uh, you know, interpretation of Christianity, which favored the poor and the meek. Um, you know, uh, turning that around to be like, no, actually, God wants us to have money, and so specifically, yeah. He wants me to have a lot of money and flaunt it in everyone's faces. Um, whoever came up with that and yeah. got people to go along with it, genius. Yeah, Kevin Smith says an Christian. evil genius Kevin, for sure. Kevin Smith says as but a Christian, still this is deeply troubling. <laughs> <laughs> well, Christian history, church history is a trip, man. <laughs> I'm not troubled by it because I'm not because I'm an atheist. It's no skin off my nose, so it's you know what I mean. But I find all but I, I find all of this do. shit fascinating, and yeah, it's it's just humans being humans, yeah, it's power but dynamics. using different justifications, yeah, yeah, using creative justifications yeah. for whatever it is that they want to do, like finding ways to be like excuse their terrible behavior. By, There's also uh, another thing that would happen. Using called, a man in the sky. There's another thing that was quite common. It still is. It's called pious deception. It's where a religious leader believes what he's saying is true. He believes in the Bible. But he lies to you so you get deeper into the into the in, into faith. It's called pious deception. Yeah. So there was a lot of that in the Middle Ages too. You yeah, know? because they justified it by saying, Well We're saving souls. Yeah, lying's a sin, but if the end result is, is that you come more saved, God, then that's and fine. And it saves your soul, sure. then it's justified. So there's a lot of that going on. Yeah, oh, big time. And they were totally aware of it, too. Like, the educated yeah. dudes were aware of it. Yeah, like all the relics, like the Shroud of Turin and all that shit. That was pious deception. They knew all that shit was fake, so they bought all those. Yeah, all the but it was saving souls. Jesus foreskins Jesus and, for, you know, all, and all that nonsense. Jesus of the cross and all Fing Spirit. Saint finger bones and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it was all fake. Yeah, they, they knew that all was they fake. They just fake. dug it out of graves and shit. Yeah. 
But it was okay because in their mind they're they're saving souls. It's a pious. Discussion. Yeah, so it was okay. Yeah. Because it's just like, look, we know it's fake, but they don't know it's fake, and if it brings more people to the religion, then it's mm-hmm. all good. They, they that's how they justified it. We're saving them from going to hell. Right. That's how they just and they probably yeah. believed it. No, they did. They probably believed they it. I think they did. <clears throat> High Desert said my dad bought into prosperity gospel. He died thinking God hated him because he was always sick and broke. Always sick and broke. Isn't yeah. that sad? Yeah. That's just really sad to me. Yeah. I mean, I'm God sure. God doesn't it, care about your money. <laughs> if he even exists, which which I doubt. But Not it's in like the way that they're talking about. No, no, and it's just like he doesn't give a shit about you. So seriously, <laughs> it's like not. In a way, I'm kind of like get over yourself, but you know what I mean. I don't know. What in I mean. in um, all the God, Abrahamic religions, um, God is just God is ex- expressly described as a middle mid eastern potentate. Okay, he walks around. He's got feet. He's got eyes. He's got hands. He's got a garden. He even made Adam, who was to tend the garden, and then uh, Eve. So and he and that it says right there in Jesus in Genesis that he uh, was walking around in the cool of the day, and uh, saw Adam. He says, uh, "Why you hide?" And he goes, "Well, we're naked. Who told you you were naked?" So they're they're describing a, a something kind of like a, a god exactly out of um, Roman or, or Greek mythology, a, a titan, a, a guy that stands fucking three hundred feet tall. He's a god. He looks just like a human being. Uh, they get married. Uh, they have uh, servants and sons, you know, also known as uh, demigods. Some of the sons are mortal, where God has a child with a mortal woman, and he has a, a, a son like Perseus or Heracles, who's a, a demigod, you know. And um, so technically Jesus is a demigod. It had a... The father was God. Actually, you know... Um, uh, El Shaddai was his name, you know, from the father of the gods. Is what that translates. That's the same as Zeus. He had a child with a mortal woman, and out pops Jesus, a demigod. Out he pops. Uh, yeah, that's the same story as it's the same story as Heracles. You know, uh, same story. Perseus is, a, is like that, and uh, so is uh, uh, Osiris, and how he became Horus, and his mother Isis. You know, she was evidently at one time in the mythology a mortal woman who had sex with uh, you know, Omun, the solar sun disk. She had a son. Mm, how'd that go? Osiris. No, excuse, excuse me. Osiris. And he was killed in a battle with Set, dismembered. And uh, his soul was mixed. He, uh, his mother put him back together using a, a falcon and, 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 and the, eye that, the eye that she salvaged from the body. And it went up to heaven. And became Horus, and he watched over Kemet, or, or that's what they called Egypt. He watched over Kemet, where he was like the savior. He'd be there during your trial and judgment into the afterworld and, and help decide, you know, whether you're going to go to heaven or not. That's Christianity, the same fucking story. Christianity, in many ways, it's a reboot of the Horus story. Yeah. Because that was in ancient Rome. There was a cult of Isis, and there was a lot of Egyptians that moved in there, along with the Jews that brought the Old Testament with them and they just they're retelling the same story it's just a different motif the Christian one is just a a Roman Christian motif over the old Egyptian story and those old Egyptian stories is what everybody believed in back in the days they just had different characters like you know but it was that same basic story same as as with the Greeks they're the same gods they just renamed them in slightly different stories yeah and you know like I said I just I find all of that really interesting you know yeah and I find it interesting that like all of the bad shit that happens because some people believe that it's true instead of well they're taking it literally right they're trying to make rules based upon it which never do that yeah it's just a story like I said they're just stories to teach moral lessons yeah that's all they are it explains where things come from sure it you know and they didn't know back then so that was just like their best guess I guess or it was just like a good story about it anyway. So yeah. So as I said, it's just kind of like after the fourth crusade, which had failed horribly. And so people started thinking, well, let's go back to this whole populist thing where anybody can just go along, you know, and maybe it's time for people that are powerless, like at the bottom of the food chain. Um, maybe it's time for us to have a swing at it because obviously you guys 
with all your money and stuff like that are not are not getting it done so you know and they're like hey and maybe um if we do that then god will favor us and he'll do us a solid and you know we'll get down there and he'll give us the holy land back it's all going to work out so in this context was when what we think of as the children's crusade occurred so and i'm not saying okay so i know there's like a lot of controversy about the actual details of what really happened which we'll get into but i don't think i don't think this was a complete myth i do think it was based on something that actually happened because between the fourth and fifth crusades there were a lot of kind of populist working class poor people kind of not exactly crusades but doing that kind of shit or they were talk, talking about doing that kind of shit now let me explain something about written history before we get into deep she's saying we're not sure if this is something that actually existed and some people go well what are you talking about they're talking about that you know 17 something or year seven something so it must have happened because they mentioned it no what ends up happening is, is if you actually find out the oldest books in which we have surviving books that we have that mention it are not going to be from 700. They're going to be from, like, from more like 13 or 1200. And that's going to be your oldest source. So the oldest source is three, 400 years old. In that time, that shit could have been made up or it had been rebooted many times. Yeah. It's because the, the person who wrote it down in that history book believed it, but he wasn't there. He's just quoting other sources he had. Well, it's just like a game of telephone. Over time, those sources probably change. Yeah. So just because it's it's written down in history that it happened didn't mean that it happened. I mean, they just have to piece things together right. from right. what they can extrapolate. It, because... could have, it could be a legend. There's always a possibility. Like I said, I'm you not... you don't have any contemporary sources, sources that were there. I mean, okay. Yeah. As far as the Children's Crusade goes, and I'm going to spoil this outright, there are... Um, about 50 mentions of the Children's Crusade in Chronicles from the time period. However, not all of these are contemporary. Some of them are. Um, some of them are contemporary from the time period and mentioned, but nobody really mentions them to any great degree. It's usually like a sentence or two or like a right. paragraph or something so like that. So it doesn't that. say what it was. And right. I will right. note that all of the contemporary sources... They say that like something like that happened. It was like this big rabble that came through these villages and did this and that and the other. But they didn't really mention that it was children until later. Okay. So I suspect and that it did mean... happen, but that it wasn't all. I'm sure that children were involved. I'm sure there were some children they, with the group. Did they actually contemporary accounts to ever mention whether or not they made it to Jerusalem? Or are they just walking around Europe? Oh, no. The, nobody did. None of them did. You're right. Uh, they're pretty sure nobody did. Okay. Which is spoil, actually, spoiler alert. You, the sure. Holy Land, they never made it. They never made it, right? No. Okay. Okay. Well, that's why, and the Children's Crusade is, yeah. you know, by all accounts, was a failure. Uh, yeah. Because as far as they know, none of them got to the Holy Land. Some of them might have, but it's not recorded. Could it have been they just wandered around Europe and Europe swallowed them up? That well, that's, yeah, we'll get into that. Okay. Because, um, right. cause, yeah, I want to talk about, like, what the stories were, what might have happened. And like I said, nothing they're talking about happening is, like, way out of bounds or anything, like, crazy. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just that I kind of feel like people, there's a popular conception of it as just, like, a bunch of kids. Like I said, like the Pied Piper. And they're just kind of going off, we're going to go convert the Muslims to Christianity. And, you know, and then it failed. Then they got sold off to slavery or whatever, which, like I said, we'll get into that, too. But um, it didn't. I don't think it actually happened that way, but I don't think they just made it up. I think there was something that it was based on, but I don't think it was all children and nobody actually knows what happened to all of them. You know what I mean? But it did seem something like it did seem to have happened. So the, and the thing about it too, is that the children's crusade, what we think of as the children's crusade was very short lived. It happened in 1212. Um, but really just over the summer, it was just like from May to September was pretty much the extent of it. And like after that, they don't really know what, how it ended up or, you know, where anybody went to. So as I said, this was not a crusade in the sense that it was not officially sanctioned by the Pope, who was Innocent III at the time. 
um, you know, and to be a crusade crusade with a capital C, you had to have the Pope's blessing. He had to say, yeah, we're doing a crusade. He didn't do it. This was a populist uprising movement. Um, so there was that. So it's not technically a crusade. Um, so there was that. Uh, now, their mission, uh, or so they claimed, so everybody said, not only to march to the Holy Land and take back Jerusalem peacefully from the Muslims. They weren't going to fight them. They thought, they won't I think, them. that they were going to get there and they would just convert everybody yeah. by magical the, power. By how cute they were yeah. or how charismatic they were or whatever. Yeah. And everyone's and everyone's going to be peacefully converted. Oh my God, you're right. Christianity. They're just going to talk sense to them. Right. Yeah. yeah. I kind of feel hey, like hey, that's hey, maybe. Hey, yeah. It sounds like which that. which sounds like some shit that they would yeah. do. Also, um, they wanted to recover the true cross, oh, yeah. uh, which had been lost to the Muslims in a battle in 1187. They wanted to get it back. 1187. Yeah. Okay. So, so they're like, we... okay, we're going to get that back too. Yeah. But like so I said, now it's the... eleven hundred and eighty seven years old, this cross, and that was the one that Jesus was Yeah. Okay. I mean if you it's just that, like I got a fucking bridge to sell you. I mean shit. One thing, if I went back then, because I'm kind of an asshole, but like if I went back then, if they didn't hang me uh, or burn me as a witch like within five minutes, which they probably would. But um, I would be totally doing... I would be on this scam, dude. Yeah. I'd just be, like, finding some wood somewhere, like, hammering it together. Look, it's the true cross. And, yeah. like, it's, how much you want for it? Yeah. I'd be doing that kind of crap. I guarantee you there probably was a cross up there that they did say was was, was the true cross. It's oh, I'm sure. A, well, yeah, that's... Yeah, apparently. My, through my through my studies, almost all the things that Christians pilgrimaged, pilgrimaged to in that area were actually uh, uh, fucking tourist resorts of the era yeah and hotels and all kinds of stuff around they were making big money on it so well yeah everybody would yeah. set up some, like the the medieval so, equivalent of food trucks and yeah so that right there tells you that they're looking at religious t-shirt sales <laughs> right there they're, they're looking at religious hoaxes that sure were set up to, for them to look at just like in an amusement park people or, hustle or, back yeah, then just like the, nowadays like going to the dinosaur park or something yeah same thing um, yeah so that's what they were doing because you gotta uh, make that money there is there was no Bethlehem they tried to find Bethlehem. They never did. So one of these European queens went out and walked out there and just went to a random fucking old town and goes, this is Bethlehem. And evidently still to this day on some maps, Bethlehem is, is over there where old Judea used to be. But it, they just said that it was, that wasn't Bethlehem though. It was just an old town. Yeah, I mean, you can say yeah. anything pretty much. Yeah, that was added to the map. <laughs> <laughs> How would she have known? She wasn't an archaeologist, man. She said she said she just felt that it was Bethlehem. Of course, yeah, I just God, feel God it in my guide, gut. I don't need brains or yeah, anything. Yeah, God guided her to it. Sure. So then they renamed it Bethlehem. Hey, man, if you say stuff with enough conviction mm -hmm. and you have a good line of bullshit, a lot of people yeah. will believe it. Disturbingly. Yeah, but uh, history shows that, or what we know shows that, forever people were trying to find Bethlehem. They never. It, it, if there was a Bethlehem, it, it was long gone, even in, by in, antiquity. Oh, big time. Give me another drink. Oh, thanks. Yeah, CB said, we really should not complain. The shit was a thousand times worse for them. Yeah, yeah. it is just kind of like, that's why I find it edifying to study history, to study things like that. Because it's like, people piss and moan about minor shit nowadays. And like, look, I'm no better in that regard. I also piss and moan about minor shit. But if you kind of like take a step back and look at how much better our lives are like how much shit we don't have to put up with that they had to put up with back then and they wouldn't even have thought about it you know what i mean it's just kind of like yeah we're just gonna shit in a bucket and we're gonna put it in the yard and you know get dysentery or whatever the fuck it's just like they didn't they couldn't read they didn't you know what i mean it's just kind of like so i don't i try not to piss and moan like too much about and i and one thing i always said like when i was younger I always made the promise to myself. I said, I'm never going to be one of those old people. Because, look, I'm 51 at this point. I'm never going to be one of those old people that's like, back in my day, blah, blah, blah. Like, it was so much better. It's just like, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be one of those people that's like, oh, this newfangled, blah, blah, I don't like it. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that. I, fe I feel like if you get like that, then you start to ossify. I'm not saying you have to, like, unilaterally accept everything new like oh this is the best awesome thing because sometimes new things are shitty but it's just kind of like sometimes old things are shitty too and you kind of see it with rose tinted glasses
So I'm just saying, like, you have to take a more, like, fucking nuanced view of it, I guess. But, yeah. Because, look, I had a lot of fun growing up in the 80s and stuff like that. But if you told me, hey, you can go back to the 80s, no thanks. No thanks. I'm not going I'd back. I'd go back for a visit. Yeah, I might go back for a day. But I'm not going back to, like, before the internet or nothing like that. Fuck no. You don't want to live there. No. Hell no. I, I lived through it already. Thanks. It was a pain in the ass. I mean, we didn't know it was a pain in the ass at the time because we didn't know any better. But knowing what we know now, it would be a giant pain We in also the didn't ass. know how low information we were. Yeah, that that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it's like with that awareness, going back would be painful. Yeah. Some of the things I thought were real in the 80s or 90s, I fucking I just feel like an idiot believing in that, believing those things. Yeah. Because, but but you didn't was know no, it. There Nobody was no way to know any knew different. any better, yeah. really. I mean, people didn't know any better. Unless you were like really super informed about some, you know, some particular. Well, they had people that were super informed about a couple of subjects, or they were involved in right. something that was happening somewhere. Yeah. So they knew all about it, but you couldn't find it, couldn't access that information on your own. Yeah, that was the thing. It's like now, well, the thing about it, it's like yeah, there's a lot of stupid people nowadays, and people still believe stupid shit and everything like that. And in some ways, it's easier to like proliferate stupid, yeah. stupid ideas because you can just put some on the internet and yeah. everybody in the world can read it everybody had stupid ideas about how government works internet exposed how government works internet exposed how hollywood and actors are you know i mean what how they work so it's just in the aggregate like i know people better. piss it's and moan but yeah it's, it's i think it's, it's creative i think it's better yeah it's destroyed it destroyed all the old illusions it's like, yeah, yeah, you can go down rabbit holes and just like, now you can just live in an entire bubble of what you want to believe. But yeah. you could do that back then, too. Yeah, you were doing that back You then. were doing that. They were putting and you, you didn't have a, a choice. Te yeah, television put you into a bubble. You didn't Big have a time. choice. You were in the American Nowadays, at least you're choosing that. Yeah, maybe. you can choose your bubble now. Right. <laughs> it's or like you, you can, can have any the, bubble you want. Or you can choose to break out of bubbles and sure. realize that these are all bubbles. <laughs> so you can look at it from a 10,000 foot view. It goes like, yeah, these are all fucking bubbles. Yeah. High Desert said people forget most music in the 80s was absolute crap. Yes. Um, yeah, it was. Forgotten. I, we grew up there. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like we listened to a lot of 80s music, but it was the good shit. This was the good shit. Yeah. I don't listen to mainstream music. We were listening stuff. to Visage the other day, fucking Fade to Grey. Yeah. It was a good song. I mean, yeah, we like all the we liked New Wave and post punk and I like all that. All that shit's still good. But it's like the pop music back then was pretty sucky. I don't really like it. Some of the best music now is dark wave and cold wave music that is uh fucking covers of the old eighties songs. They can fucking they can remake some of those songs so badass now. Well, I love that, like, a lot of goth bands nowadays, like, sound like goth bands from the 80s. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't... Because I have a bunch of them on my Spotify, and, like, sometimes they'll come on, and Tom's like, wait, is this new or is this old? Yeah, so it's I'm new. I'm like, no, it's new. Because they... Well, they didn't grow up with it. They were... They're young. Like, they're in their 20s or 30s, but they love that shit. Yeah. And they want a band that sounds like that, even though they didn't live through it, which I think is kind of cool. But, you know, it makes me feel less old, I guess. But, uh, but yeah. So where was I? Okay, so, like I said, so, basically, according to historians, there are about 50, 60 chronicles that the Children's Crusade is mentioned in. But, like I said, nobody made a huge deal about it. Just <coughs> a couple sentences here and there. Like, somebody, because the chronicles, some of them were, like, monks or something that was in this village. And they would say something like, man, all these fucking bums, like, came through this fucking, like, 7,000 bums came through this village, like, wanting food and preaching and blah, blah, blah. And they're on their way to the Holy Land. So something like that did happen. But a lot of the chronicles came later. Now, there were a lot of contemporary ones, like I said, that were people that were around at the time. And they wrote down, yeah, all these people came through the village, you know, just a year or two, like, after it happened. So there was that. But there were some ones that came along later that maybe had some shit embellished on it and like shit added to it which we'll get into in a minute so what what i'm thinking is that the narrative about the children's crusade it's probably based on some shit that really happened but i think that as time went on details were added like it was embellished you know what i mean so here's the the traditional account of this of the children's crusade and it's actually I want to say it's, and this didn't really come about until like the late 70s, I feel like, that scholars were talking about this. Because before it was kind of t told as one narrative, but it's actually talking about two different kids. 
but I think they were conflated because their stories were kind of similar. Whether they either of them existed, I'm not entirely sure. So the gist of the story is that there's a kid, usually he's 12 years old, and he starts preaching, uh, and in one case is visited by Jesus, uh, you know, so there's that. And he's like, hey, you need to go and lead a crusade and convert the Muslims to Christianity. And then he has like a bunch of visions and does miracles and stuff like that. Gets um, a bunch of like an army of children, uh, anywhere from 30,000 to 90,000. And they go south toward the Mediterranean Sea. They believe that the sea is going to part for them the way it parted for the Israelites. So they can walk to Jerusalem. Um, in uh, the, the classic narrative of the story, this does not happen because why would it? Um, and the story also says that the kids were eventually sold to two merchants who were like, hey, kids, we'll give you free passage on a boat to Jerusalem and instead took them to Tunisia and sold them into slavery, which that doesn't sound too out of bounds. That sounds like some shit that probably happened. Um, uh, there's also kind of ones where some of them are taken to be sold into slavery and then some of them like die in a like a hurricane or something like that. Like there's shipwreck and a bunch of them die. So that's kind of the traditional story. So what they found out later, like more recent recent, like, and I'm talking recent, like late seventies to nowadays, that there were actually two different kids, two different stories that this was based on. And they were probably conflated. Did these kids really exist? Maybe, um, but we're not sure. Cause like I said, they were kind of peasants. So the first movement that we're talking about, which comprises the Children's Crusade. Now, this was a kid named Nicholas, and he was a shepherd from Germany. Uh, again, 12 years old, as the other kid was as well. We'll get into maybe why that's not the case later on. Now, his idea was he was going to lead a group of children across the Alps and into Italy. And again, this was May or June, 1212. Uh, they don't know a huge amount about Nicholas as a person. One thing that a lot of the chronicles brought up was that he had, uh, he was from Cologne and he had um, like a standard thing with a with a towel cross, like an onk, yeah. yeah. kind of like on the top of it. And that was kind of like his emblem. A lot of people did mention that. And I was like, ooh, well, here's a kid who understands the power of branding, he branded, even, so. even back in the middle ages. So, like I said, whether this kid really existed, I don't know. But it it, sounds fishy. They did kind of bring that up that he had yeah. that he always had that that towel cross, that onk. Now Nicholas was basically like, yeah, we're going to the Holy Land and we're gonna take back the Holy. Land. Both of them said the same thing that they were not gonna fight. They were not gonna kill the Saracens. They were not going to. They were going to convert them through sheer charisma and just like talking their ass off, I guess. That was kind of their whole thing because they had said that God told them that it was going to be a peaceful conversion. We're just going to go down there in our numbers and they're just going to see how, how honest we how, are. Yeah, like how, how pious we are. We are. Yeah, and they're yeah. going to be like, all right, fair enough. We're converting like right now, which like I said, I mean, if they were really kids, that seems like a very kid thing to like think of. Yeah, I'm imagining this situation <laughs> of what this situation would really look like to the eyes of a, of a medieval adult. I'm not sure this shit, like, think about this. You're a pretty grisly medieval adult. What <laughs> yeah. little kids do or think, it doesn't mean a fucking shit to you. You gotta be there. No. <laughs> and this kid shows up with this fucking magical staff and he's saying all this stuff. You'd probably laugh him off. Like, you fucking crazy. Whatever, yeah, kid. Yeah, it's probably what would it be. Well, another thing, too, that I feel like I should point out is that in the Middle Ages, they didn't have the same conception of childhood yeah, that no. we have nowadays. If you were 12 years old... You would have been a kind of an adult. I mean, you yeah. kind of would have been an adult. You would have had, like, a job. Yeah. You know? Well, they had a job almost from birth. Yeah. They were doing well, I mean, this kid, even yeah. though he's supposedly 12, he's a shepherd, which a lot of kids back then would yeah. have been. So he must have, if, if that dude actually existed, he must have been able to preach his ass off and he fucking just guilt people into listening to him. Yeah. He was supposedly very charismatic. Maybe that's what it was. 
Which, and, then, and like I said, I, that, I don't doubt it because there was a lot of this going on in this time period. And some yeah. of them might have been kids. Like I said, I don't know if this kid was as young as they're saying he so was. He must have been able to preach the gospel fucking in a way to where adults would just kind of did not want to be seen disagreeing with him. Yeah. Maybe they didn't believe it, but they wouldn't admit to other people around him that they didn't believe what he was saying. Because then that might look like, well, you're not a pious Christian then. And then, you know what I mean, you're a bad person because you right. don't believe the kids say it. That may have been may, maybe what they're talking about. And maybe he was like super cute and like innocent looking, and they were just like, "Look at that face! Oh my god!" And I, e- either if he couldn't read, and most people couldn't read back then. Yeah, most people could. That means he had, he had had the Bible memorized, or at least which is lot. pretty impressive in he, itself. Honestly, that or that's a memor- long ass book. Either that, or he just listened to priests and memorized the techniques that they used. Right. To keep followers in line. Right. So I mean, he be, wasn't. This kid wasn't stupid. If he yeah. was really he was too dumb to too dumb to be uh, he was so dumb that he was very overconfident which maybe helped sell it that's some dunning kruger shit right there yeah <laughs> probably thought he was really <laughs> knew what he was talking about and people were like okay all right yeah that's kind of sad because i I, brought him. I i kind of feel like that is still um very much relevant to today's <clears throat> world it's like usually people that don't know shit are like way more confident than and they're real good that, at shit that people don't like you know I'm, people that actually know shit are usually like pretty doubt because they're just yeah. like wait is that right because you're always like questioning yourself that's yeah. how you like you know what i mean i'm ex-infantry you know and uh, i had an experience as a security contractor if you ever i've seen videos in some of those african wars there were wars between factions inside these countries and the ones that were kicking ass were these little kids. Because they don't know enough to be scared. Right, they don't know any better. They don't know any better. They, 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 don't, they, they don't think they can be killed. They think they're all bulletproof. Yeah. And that's dangerous to go up against somebody, even if they're not highly skilled. It's dangerous going up, going up against somebody who doesn't think they can be killed. Yeah, you know they they go kamikaze. They're yeah, there is you. there is some uh, advantage in that yeah. for sure. So it might be, might be that he's doing kind of like the religious version of that. He doesn't realize that what he's saying could get him into some big trouble. It's working where he lives, but if he goes out and, and he's he's out, fucking around Saracens or Muslims, they probably not gonna like what he says. They're not gonna understand what he says, but he hasn't even g- g- thought that far. Right. Whatever language he spoke, probably some archaic German or something, they wouldn't understand that. They would just see some kid with his magical stick that didn't mean anything. Like, what's this? He said, about? grab that kid. You know, <laughs> grab that kid. I'm gonna put that, that kid's gonna be my servant. We're gonna make him a eunuch and fucking he's gonna pour my wine. You know? Yeah, he looks like a wine pourer, that yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm yeah, and I kind of feel like that's maybe what we're talking about here like i said as as far as dunning kruger goes because when you're a kid you kind of and especially like when you get a little bit into the teenage years until you get a little bit old enough to know better but it's like because teenagers think they know fucking everything and they think everyone else all adults are idiots and they don't know anything and they don't understand and blah blah and uh you know I, i understand i went through that phase also everybody does so and they also think that they can't get killed or hurt or anything. Like, I didn't think that. I always was very aware <laughs> that I could be hurt and killed because, you know, I have anxiety. But um, but most people are like that. So I can kind of see. So that's why I'm kind of leaning toward. I don't know if the kid was as young as they say, but I don't think it's that crazy either i mean 12 years old like i said it seems young to us nowadays but in the middle ages it wouldn't have been that young i mean he's, he had a job you know what i mean they didn't have a, t- a conception of like a teenage culture like we have nowadays once you were old enough to do shit on your own you did shit on your own you went out and worked you didn't you weren't coddled you know what i mean you weren't going to school if you're a peasant or anything like that you just like, go tend the sheep nicholas that was kind of your shit. So, uh, so yeah. So he thinks, okay, okay, so he tells all his followers, um, you know, he's doing shit. Like I said, he was, you know, by all accounts, very charismatic. Um, and he got a lot of followers. And he's like, we're just going to go there. We're going to peacefully convert the Muslims. Um, you know, God is going to uh, part the sea for us, just like he did for the Israelites. And so he goes to... Like, a, a lot of his followers, like, come to Cologne. 
and then they kind of took off in two different directions, like through Switzerland, like they're going wherever they're going. This shit's funny. So, he, so he's he's a shepherd. Mm-hmm. That means he doesn't know how to read. He's he's illiterate, even yeah. in his own language. Like I said, and he doesn't know the Bible because the Bible was written in Latin at this point, and only a priest could read Latin. They only they were allowed to read that Bible. He's just heard Bible stories, and he's taking them and he's running with it. Yeah, that kid's got some fucking balls, man. Well, like you said, he was probably too young to yeah. know that that was ballsy. What would happen is that he'd show up. Kids think they know everything. In Islamic, in, in, in Islamic, he was going to show up in the Islamic world, man, and they're running three fucking books. One of them is fucking the Hadith, and there's all kinds of Islamic jurisprudence and all these fucking legal systems that they're going to deal with. They're gonna, they're going to fucking if they even understood what that kid would say, they would say, "Oh, this kid's full of shit," because it says right here in this sunnah. Blah, 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 blah. They're gonna come at him like a, like a team of lawyers, all right? They, they they would laugh at that kid. It's fucking funny. That's the thing. I kind of feel like yeah. in this time period, yeah. I kind of feel like the Islamic world was more yeah, educated was generally. Yeah, it was more it was more uh, sophisticated and better developed at, at, at this time. I mean, there's a reason why a lot of the stars and stuff like that have Islamic yeah. names. Yeah, and a lot of crusaders went back to their homelands, fucking being semi-Islamic too. When they uh, they knew who Muhammad was, uh, it may be that the word Baphomet might be a, a bastardization of the word Muhammad. Remember when they were wiping out the Knights Templar, that said that they were worshiping Baphomet, and it was a head. And it could have been Muhammad, is what. Is what, what I mean, they, Lord knows what that could mean. Yeah. Some people have said that it might be talking about maybe they had seen what they believed to be the head of John the Baptist. That was another mm-hmm. thing that it could have been. That the Knights Templar maybe brought back a relic that they thought was the Look, head it's of a random severed head. Yeah. <laughs> well, it might have been It's some, John the Baptist. It may have had it in a jar of something. Sure. Or, or mummified, and they might have believed that it was John the Baptist. People forget that Baptists were a separate religion from Christianity. They, it predates Christian, Christianity. They, it's just that in the Bible, they tell the way they tell the story is that all the Baptists converted to Christianity. The followers of, of John the Baptist did. So that's what Southern Baptists are all about. They were, like fucking, said, they were a possession cult that converted to Christianity. Yeah. And that's what it says right there in the scriptures. And the Baptists are still around in the Middle East, but they're just tiny, tiny religions. And they're not Christian. They're just kind of Christian adjacent. Had, <laughs> Christian-ish. Had, yeah, fucking. Uh, was John John the Baptist was their prophet. I don't know if they have anything written, but they they still worship. It. I'm not sure. I'd have to like look that up actually. I'm not real up on that. It's old. Yeah. Old and damn near extinct. Yeah. But like you said, it's kind of like it would be just like a kid. Yeah. To come up with some shit like this, yeah. where all we have to do is, is talk get, to them, is yeah. get a bunch of yeah, yeah. That sounds like a kid thing to do. Yeah, I'll just talk to them and tell them how true the Bible I'm is. Special. Yeah. Once they meet me, I'll I'll, they'll, I'll, they'll, I'll explain they'll, it. They will understand. No one's just explain it to them. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They I gotta explain. They it. haven't heard the gospel. Because kids are very yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, self-absorbed. Yeah. And they think they're the first ones to ever think of anything. And just, I mean, that's just the way kids are. That's the way brains develop. Yeah, and they'd pull out an Islamic scholar, and he'd probably know the New Testament fucking books pretty well. He'd probably know everything about it. You know what I mean? He'd go by another. You're, you're going to be a eunuch in, in, <laughs> in my harem. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. <clears throat> yeah, because you haven't accepted the, the final revelation of God. This is old shit here. This is all obsolete. Yeah, you guys yeah. are way behind the time. You guys are way behind the time, yeah. Yeah. Oracle says, kid logic is fortunately something most of us grow out of. Yeah, not everyone does, sadly. But, uh, yeah. yeah. But I could totally see, that is a very kid thing yeah. to think we're just going to go. Yeah, I, I was thinking that maybe these didn't happen, but looking at it this way, no, they, that could probably happen. That's what I mean. I don't think this is that yeah. out there. Right. Whether it happened exactly the way. A 12-year-old kid could be that stupid. And he could get pretty far in a Christian world, but then once he got out of that Christian world, he would just be a fucking fish out of water. Yeah. And he'd get right through. I mean, through. it would be different 
Okay. It would be different if the whole story of the Children's Crusade was this 12-year-old started it and they yeah. went there and, they, and it worked and, like, they converted. Like, obviously that would be bullshit. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they're like, well, the Children's Crusade, it was like two different 12-year-old kids kind of around the same time where there was a lot of this kind of sentiment going on. And they tried to do it and they failed miserably. Like, they didn't even get there. So that, to me, it's sounds just hard to believe that a little bit more. Realistic. It's hard, to, hard to believe that somebody from the from the Catholic Church didn't hear about this. Well, no, they did. Like, why all, didn't like they I stop said, them? Um, I, you know what? I don't really know. Adult priests would know better, yeah, even from that era. They're like, no, you're gonna, you're gonna change. Or maybe I'm sure, like, some maybe people the question, try, maybe tried to stop maybe them. Maybe if not the sure. followers saw the priests questioning these promises these kids are making. Maybe that would make that priest look like a non-believer. So maybe it's better the priest says, yeah, he's in his mind thinking, yeah, they're going to get swallowed up. But, you know, to the crowd, he goes, oh, see how good God is? Well, yeah, see, I I kind of feel like, and we'll get into that a little bit later on because there was a little bit of that going on (coughs) in the story. Is because you kind of, there was a fine line to walk, right? Because if this did happen, like if all of these kids or teenagers or poor people or whatever it was, if they went off on this crusade like unsanctioned, we're just going to do this shit because you guys have not done it. Yeah. You know, you haven't got it done. So we're going to go do it and we're going to show you how it's done. And if they did that, then if you're like a high up church, church official, you can't really come out and condemn that. Because it's a popular movement, right? Yeah, it would look like you were a non-believer. And it would, yeah, and you would kind of look like a douche. And it's just like, well, and they're all saying, well, look, Jesus gave me a letter that said that I need to do this. Yeah. And then you can't, so you really have to walk a tightrope there. You yeah. can't, like, shit on them. Right. You don't want to encourage it necessarily, but you don't want to discourage it either. Could have been the priests were just like, these kids are goners, but we can't do anything about it. That's. I kind of feel like that yeah. was maybe. And then, and then the they might have said, and there's a slim possibility that it might work. Yeah. And if it does, but they're like, it, probably it won't. Yeah. yeah. Spoiler yeah. alert: it didn't. No. <laughs> it didn't. Like I said, it almost sounds like an '80s movie. We're gonna yeah. like fucking. We're gonna get a group together and we're gonna dance and save our town. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's like that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. It's that a really kind of, bad '80s movie. Right. It kind of sounded like that. We waste fifty quadrillion dollars to save the town <laughs> because right. Marty could dance. Right, Marty, you're a great dancer. <laughs> like I like your little dance gesture. Yeah, there. yeah. that was nice. Yeah. Like some out of South Park. Yeah, it was just a two-dimensional dance. <laughs> this is this is giving me that vibe. It's yeah. giving me like '80s. We have to save our town by having yeah. a dance off yeah. kind of vibe. <laughs> but yeah, so <clears throat> oh my goodness. Okay, so at this point. According to the story, um, you know, he, his, he has all these followers and they go off in two groups. They're taking a different route. Now, according to most accounts, most of the people on this journey, whether they were all children or not, which I doubt, uh, most of them died. Um, also, a bunch of them just said, fuck this and went back home because, like I said, they didn't. They were kids and poor people and stuff like that they didn't like prepare you know what i mean like i said they didn't have supply lines they didn't have weapons they didn't have a system they didn't have anything in place where it's like hey how are we gonna get food how are we gonna they're gonna beg the whole way they're just walking well and they did yeah so it's just kind of like um so i kind of feel like most people and most normal people like you go on this thing yeah you're all like fucking gung-ho about it and then like you get a few miles down the road you're like this kind of blows like we're just walking there's no food we have to like beg people nobody wants to give us anything all, people are all, spitting on us all the girl all the girls are doing friendly fishing no what, what they call it friendly fishing remember friendly fishing no it's called um what are they called? flirty flirty fishing? Flirty fishing. fishing yeah flirty fishing that's a new thing there's a christian cult they were selling ass yeah so, pimping mean, out the girls flirty pretty much fishing. yeah yeah which might have happened here. I'm yeah. not entirely sure. I mean, the, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. That's, it happened. We're hungry. Way. Go ahead. Go talk to those guys. Or go get it. Yeah. Go Go, go flash your titties at him yeah, and yeah. like get us some sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> you know what go I mean? Sit on, go sit on his lap and jump him down. <laughs> <laughs> like the girls are like, yeah. why? Just yeah. don't ask. Yeah, just yeah, just yeah. do it. Just kind of say, yeah. Yeah, go get us some Come gruel. Come back with a loaf of bread. Go get us some gruel. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, so I kind of feel like that was probably going on too. But like I said, they didn't plan <clears> anything. They just thought... I think they genuinely thought that God was going to provide. Again, spoiler alert, he did not. So most of them died that they know of. Um, A lot of them just said, fuck this, and went back home. Yeah. Now, the smart ones were just like, yeah, Yeah. I don't think so. I'm going home. I'm going home. 
<laughs> I'm going home. Yeah. So um, now there was, there have been a few accounts that about seven thousand of them got to Genoa in Italy in August of twelve twelve. Now they all march over to the harbor, and they think that it's going to part like the Red Sea. Yeah. Okay. This sounded good. <laughs> Guess what? It didn't. They drowned. <laughs> no, they didn't. Okay. No, they didn't do that. It didn't, it didn't they work. were sitting there waiting, which is okay. also kind of sad and hilarious. Because yeah. I'm like, you really thought that was going to happen? Oh, that's that makes me sad. <laughs> they actually thought that was going to happen. That's trippy shit. <laughs> so they're just like sitting there going, what the fuck? Nicholas, you said it was going to part. Yeah. Well, God told me. That. Yeah. It's just like, okay. Um. So yeah. So apparently at this stage, some of the people... We're like, fuck you, Nicholas. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're just like, they took off. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And some of them, though, doubled down. They're like, I'm just going to wait. God's going to do this shit eventually. And I'm just going to sit here <coughs> until it happens. It right, because he's just like testing me. Yeah. So there was that kind of shit, too. God's going to change his mind. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to. Yeah, God's testing me. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> I kind of feel like that's that. That's a good one, yeah. Now, of the people that stayed, uh, reportedly, the kind of authorities in Genoa um, kind of were impressed by this. They're like, man, look at all these people that came here on the pilgrimage and yeah. it's, or they're going to go and like do the crusade and thought that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Like they, they got some gumption. Yeah. They like gumption. <coughs> so they're like, okay, guess what? If you guys want to stay in Genoa, we will give you citizenship. Okay. You yeah. can stay here. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and most of the remaining crusaders, apparently, were like, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just stayed there. Um, you know, because there was a lot of jobs. I mean, these uh, apparently, like, all these cities around Italy, like, they needed cheap labor. They needed yeah. people to do jobs and stuff like that. So a lot of people were like, all right. And then they just stayed there and settled down. You know what I mean? And got jobs and whatnot. So, you know, it wasn't so much a <coughs> religious conversion. Obviously, they never made it to the Holy Land. But they're like, hey, this is a nice place. It's kind of warm here, you know. So Nicholas, by most accounts, um, was like, nah, man, I'm going to keep going. Yeah. So he goes to Pisa. And some people came with him, but, like, as they're journeying, like, more people are kind of, you know, leaving. You know what I mean? Because they're like, eh, I don't know if this is going to work out. Now they get to Pisa, the remaining people, and there's two ships uh, that are going to Palestine. And they're like, well, we'll take you guys, um, you know, as far as we're going. Now, so some of them went with them. So it's possible that those kids that got on the ship got to the Holy Land. There's no record of it. <coughs> I kind of doubt it. Um, but that's kind of the only, that's the closest anybody got, to be honest. And, Genoa. And like I said, well, like I said, you know, from yeah, this ship. And like yeah. I said, I don't know if the, any of the kids got on the ship and if they actually got, to, uh, got there. Now, Nicholas, though... Um, and a few of his hangers on. They said, you know what we're going to do? We're actually going to go to have a meeting with Pope Innocent III, and we're going to get his blessing to do this shit, because they thought that it would be better if it was, like, officially sanctioned or whatever. So, like, so that's what we're going to do. And that would part the sea? I don't know. Yeah, okay. So they're like, well, that's what we're going to do, because I guess at this point they're just kind of like, well, we don't know what we're going to do. So right. they just decided that would be a good idea. Because, it's like I said, it wasn't official. So they said, we're going to do that. Now, by some accounts, they did get there. And Nicholas was able to get an audience with Pope Innocent III. Now, the Pope was not jazzed about the whole children's crusade idea. Yeah. Because he's like, look, it's, it's not a crusade unless I say yeah, so. Yeah. It's kind of my thing. <coughs> you went um, over my head. Yeah, you so you kind of like man. did, yeah, it's, I, I didn't have a say-so in this, and I don't like yeah. that. He didn't want to be too much of a dick about it, though, because like I said, as I mentioned earlier, you know, this was a very popular movement. There was a, this wasn't the only thing like this that was going on at the time. There was a very, uh, you know, a prevalent, like, populist kind of, hey, we're going to go get the Muslims out of the Holy Land type of thing. So it was, it was a widespread sentiment. So it was a popular idea, so he didn't want to unilaterally like condemn it right so apparently reportedly he sees the kid and it, basically what he said was like you guys are good kids 
but you should go back home and when you're grown up you should come back and do a real crusade <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean um but you know i can't give this one my blessing because whatever he did say apparently <coughs> that um you guys though you're putting all of us church officials to shame you know what i mean with all of your piety and whatnot yeah y'all are awesome so, yeah y'all are awesome but it was basically that yeah y'all but, are go, awesome, but, but go but go home but go home yeah your children. So the Pope, the Pope saved him. I mean, basically, pretty much. Basically, yeah. He so put, the Pope knew what was up. Yeah. He's like, y'all are gonna get killed. <laughs> and, and I'm sure yeah. a lot of them did. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Because a lot of them did not come home, but I don't think all of them died. I think if this was, you know, close to what happened, I think probably a lot of them just settled in, uh, no you know, in Italy or something like that, and just stayed there. So it's not really that big of a deal. It's, you know, obviously a lot of them probably died from exposure and from like not having enough food and various other things so um so yeah so a lot of the ones after that after the pope was just like nah you know just y'all are cool but go home please now so a lot of them did go home now there's a couple different accounts of what happened to nicholas after this like i said i'm not entirely sure nicholas is a real person he might be some accounts say that he didn't that he tried to go back home but he died um on the way back like through the alps now another thing that they said happened was that his dad back home in cologne um a lot of other families blamed his dad for nicholas taking all their kids right essentially that sounds like plausible. and off and so they lynched him yeah that sounds plausible that's a very common story as well, yeah. that they lynched Nicholas's dad for, they blamed, you know, because Nicholas wasn't there to yeah. lynch, obviously. So they're like, well, here's the next best person. So that's kind of a common thing. That, that's like um, something they would do, though. That does sound like some shit they would do. Like like I said, nothing in here is, whether it really happened like yeah. that or not, I don't know, but nothing in here is, like, crazy. That, yeah, it doesn't sound like the church meddled with it, the story. Mm. If the church meddled with the story, that the, the sea would have parted. All right. Yeah. <laughs> bunch of shit would have happened. They would have got to the fucking. They would have got to the Holy Land, and they would have converted if it was a religious story. Yeah, we win. So, yeah. So, so probably, probably did happen, or at least. I yeah. The only thing I take issue with is that I don't think it was children necessarily. I think there were children involved, and it may have even been led by a child or a teenager. <coughs> Maybe but I think that it. most. Of, yeah, I think the most of the people were, were just adults. Yeah. Probably. It wasn't all children. Like uh, I think that's that's yeah. kind of the only and thing. Nicholas's I take issue dad, with. that that town would have been like, your kid got all our kids killed. They never came back. They're dead. That dead meat. That kind of shit. So you're liable. You're culpable. You should have. You, you should. Yeah, and that stopped your son from doing that. Right. So, you know they're all dead, and you did. You, you know we're gonna put it all on you because you, you didn't stop it. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. That's so several. Like, yeah. So several accounts do that say that easily. Nicholas's dad yeah. got hanged. Probably true. By the villagers, uh, because they blamed him for Nicholas taking their children away, and their children did not come yeah, back. And it's also kind of, it also sounds likely that he Nicholas died on his way back, because he been, might have. Because th- he'd been out there for a while, so he was probably worn down quite a bit. I mean, like I said, this and is back in the day. Back, they didn't have yeah. sanitation. They didn't have any supplies. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't have anything. Like, a lot of people t- did help them along the yeah. way. Like, they got fed and stuff, but it's just like they weren't ready for... It's probably something like they were sleeping on the side of the road in a cold snap. Yeah, they probably were. Yeah. Now, I will note that there are other accounts that said that Nicholas survived, and that he actually lived in Rome, and that a few years later, in 1217, he actually participated in the Fifth Crusade. I bet you it's not true. Which, I don't know. But like I said, it's... I've heard both stories. So I, th- nobody knows what happened to him. But there were stories that he survived and was in the Fifth Crusade. Like he distinguished himself in Egypt and stuff like that. But then there's also accounts that he died yeah. trying to get back home. Which to me seems that more, plausible. more likely. Yeah. <laughs> That's more likely. Um, you know. Uh, as, far, as far as anybody knows, nobody got to the Holy Land. Um, as far as anybody knows, the farthest anybody got was um brindisi which is in southern italy um nobody made it to the holy land as far as they know unless some of those kids got there on the boat but there's no record shows you how dangerous ideology is just because you believe something doesn't mean it's gonna happen 
But, yeah. But, you know, magical <laughs> thinking is about, well, if I believe it hard enough, and because it's good, it will happen. No. That's, that's not, how, not how shit works. I hate that's to like say. there are dudes that think that, well, because I get mad, the madder I get, the stronger I get, I can kick that dude's ass. And you're just talking about a trained fighter. Dude, no. No. You can jump on MMA guys all you want. You're not going to beat his ass because you get mad. I mean, no. reality <laughs> will soon yeah. put paid to your delusions yeah. if you tempt it enough. Right. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and I'm not saying that it's, it's good to... Here's the thing. It's good to think positively, to be confident. You will actually get farther like that than being yeah. negative. But there's limits to that, too. But yeah. you can't get overconfident or yeah. you will get fucking punched down. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> you can get away with shit for a long time, like, depending on what your situation is. Too much faith. But, they had too much faith. Yeah. Like I said, maybe a little bit is good, but too much is, yeah, you're going to get in big trouble. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that was Nicholas. Now, interestingly, right around this same time period, there was another kid, another 12-year-old, who was doing essentially the same thing. Same thing. And this is Stephen of... Okay, I know I'm going to... I took French for four years, and I'm sure I'm going to pronounce this wrong. But it's like... Uh, Cloa? Cloa. It looks like Cloyer to me. Um, but every single documentary I watched, and when I looked up the thing, they said that that was how it was pronounced. It was Cloa. So I'm like, so that's how I'm going to, um, that's how I'm going to, well, I'm not going to pronounce it again. Just say Stephen, yeah. <laughs> oh, Steve. Or Etienne, if yeah. you want to be French about it. So this was another 12-year-old, and he was also a shepherd, but he was from France. Now, this kid, unlike Nicholas, the German kid, he said in around, around the same time period, May or June of 1212, that Jesus had come to him as he didn't know it was jesus at first but it, he said he just looked like this poor pilgrim guy and then like later he was revealed as jesus so jesus gives him a letter because okay i was just like a letter from jesus all right that's a little weird but all right so he gives him a letter that says take this to the king <laughs> i got some important i don't know why jesus couldn't just show up to the king and tell him some shit but you know what i mean well that era man be being literate was like a high tech skill. Mm -hmm. Most people couldn't read. So this kid's telling a story that would be the equivalent of, yeah, an angel came down and gave me this laptop. <laughs> said, take it to the, <laughs> said take it to the president. So, take this laptop yeah, to the president. Yeah. Because a book was a lap a big book was like a laptop, <laughs> a letter was like a laptop. You know. Take so like, this thumb drive. Yeah, yeah. To to you to the To the queen. To the president, yeah. <laughs> So he's like, it's got shit. some important shit on it. Yes, yeah, so that's high tech. A, la a letter would be like that's, And the that's kid's like, what the fuck time. does this even say? It's yeah. like all this chicken scratch. Jesus gave me a motherfucking letter. Damn, gave you a letter? Yeah, he, he's keeping up with the technology, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> He's on the cutting edge. <laughs> he's on the cutting edge of technology. Sure. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that, I don't know why that was so funny to me that like Jesus gave him a letter. Because I was, I guess because I thought it's Jesus. You would think that he just appeared Something to do so prosaic as a yeah. letter just seemed very funny to me. I don't know shit like that. As well, much. that would cut that would cut Stephen out of the fucking chain, out out of the cycle. Right, exactly. He had to be in there somewhere. So he's like, yeah, there had yeah, to be some I kind got of this thing letter that, from Jesus. And then I he told me that I had to yeah. take this. As, why, like I said, why Jesus couldn't just go to the king himself and be like, here, bro, like, yeah. you know, because then Stephen would be left out. He yeah, would be, it, it wouldn't be as good a story. Would be the same. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. So, I, like I said, you have if these were really kids in the Middle Ages, you have to admire their fucking grift because yeah. Yeah. that's a great shit to come up with. Yeah, like Nicholas with the whole Tau cross thing, like the branding, and this kid with the letter from Jesus. He shows brilliant. up. Shows up to the king. Brilliant, king. Got a message <laughs> from Jesus for you right here. You Philip see. was his name yeah, actually. Okay, the yeah. king. <laughs> king Philip. I got a message for you. It's from Jesus. I got a message Showing up from, like he's fucking... I got a message from yeah, Jesus. Like, <laughs> I mean. <coughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, because he said that he had a message from Jesus, I guess, again, he was supposedly also really charismatic. He also 
kind of had visions and there's still, you know, like a lot of kind of prophet type uh, people did back then. So he kind of started gathering around him other young people, maybe not as young as 12 as he was purported to be, maybe just like teenagers and people in their 20s and stuff. This I kind of feel like this was a youth movement, like the way the hippies maybe were. So it was just like teenagers and people in their 20s, which isn't that weird. So so all of these people come, kind of come around and they are kind of all saying like, yeah, they can work miracles, they can do this, that, and the other. Now, according to some accounts, he also gathered around 30,000 people. Not all children, some of them were adults also. Um, but then, so he goes to uh, Saint Denis and he supposedly did some miracles and shit there. So he goes to see the king, Philip II. And he's like, here, I have this letter from Jesus. <laughs> this funny shit, man. Letter, it's a letter from Jesus. That's, I don't know why that's so funny to me. It it's just, just is. Fun. It just is. Just because he can't. The, dr the drunker I get, the funnier it is. Yeah. So, it's, <laughs> so, so the king had um, scholarly advisors uh, from the the Sorbonne, which, you know, the, the very famous university in France. And he's like, what do you think of this shit? Is this really a letter from Jesus? Like, what should, should, what should I do about this? You know what I mean? I'm sure you knew this. So, shit. yeah, well, that's what I mean. So the scholars were just like, nah, bro. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you know, he's like, yeah, that's what I thought, too. And they're like, yeah, for real. So um, so at this point, they, I feel like they're trying to be nice about it. Like, he goes and talk. I, I kind of picture it. Like, Philip, like, takes the letter. And he's like, what do you guys think about this? And they're just like, this is some bullshit, bro. It's just like, I don't. And he's just like, that's what I was thinking, too. But I don't want to be. It's just a kid, right? It's like, I don't want to be mean. And they're just like, nah, it's just like, don't. It's like a scam or something. So he's just like, okay, well, I'm just going to be try to be diplomatic about it, right? And they're like, okay, cool. So he goes back over there. And he's basically like, um, thank you very much, child, for bringing this to my attention. But, nah. Um, you know, I, I don't think this is legitimate. Yeah, of course. They did not take them seriously. I mean, they're grown-ups, right? This is a kid. Yeah, now, contrary to popular belief, a lot a lot of the people in power were not pious. They, I think, you know, records show that a lot of them were just fucking, kind of went along with it, but they didn't believe it. I kind of feel like that was kind of, yeah, I kind of feel like people that were educated yeah, they did, they did. were just kind of like, we're new. It was all they thought kind of it might bullshit. have been based on something that re was real. Yeah, they but they were just kind of yeah. like, if somebody came to them with some claim like this, hey, I got yeah. a letter from Jesus. They'd they'd like, get the fuck out of here. No, yeah. I, don't, I don't think so. Yeah. So that was kind of what happened in this situation. Now, by some accounts, the crusade, quote unquote, fizzled out at this point. Like, everybody's just kind of like, okay, disperse. It was kind of like that. However... By other accounts, Stephen like dug his fucking heels in. He's just like, nah, I just I believe in this shit. And he just started. He went to some abbey nearby and started preaching there, and like started getting more followers. <coughs> and from this point, um, he started traveling around France preaching, essentially. Um, and he's just like, we're gonna go on a crusade. We're going to Jerusalem. Now, obviously, the church was just kind of like. No, please don't listen to this child. But a lot of people, and not just children, it was supposedly like adults as well. That's what I mean. This, that's why I, the only thing I'm quibbling with is the moniker of Children's Crusade. Because I think that if something like this did happen, which like I said, it's not completely out of left field because there were a lot of populist movements like this. I just kind of feel like it wasn't all children. It was a lot of people. It was just poor people, disenfranchised people, whoever. They just went along with it. So a bunch of people, like, started listening to him because apparently, again, he was very charismatic. Now, the thing about it, though, and I kind of feel like he wasn't maybe as successful as Nicholas of Cologne was because he got a lot of people to listen to his message initially. But then, like, as time came to do something proactive, a lot of people were like, nah, I got I got to wash my hair. You know what I mean? It was just kind of like, so they just kind of started peeling off, like, after a time period. So by the time that he was thinking about, yeah, we're going to go to Jerusalem and convert the Muslims, um, you know, it was maybe like half of his initial people. Because people were just like, nah, you know, I got shit to do. I, I, I can't really get involved in this. You know what I mean? So what happens, I mean, this is only like over, like I said, the Children's Crusade 
um, it was only like a summer. It, it's all it was. It was just like a couple of months. It wasn't like a long time period. So, like the end of June of twelve twelve, um, Stephen takes his followers, however many there were. Like a lot of them had peeled off at this point, but he still had some. So they go from uh, they go to Marseille in France, which is a port city. And along the way, again, they're, you know, they're, they're just basically relying on the kindness of strangers. They're just kind of like, hey, we need a place to sleep. Can we sleep in your barn or, you know, give us some food? And a lot of people did because they believed in the cause and they're just like, oh, yeah. And they thought they were being pious. They thought, hey, okay, we're going to give these kids some food or whatever, however many of them there were. So they were kind of surviving like that. Um but again, just like in the case of Nicholas, it does seem like as the journey went on, a lot of people were just kind of like, man, this kind of blows. I'm going back home. You yeah. know what I mean? So people would just, he would just lose people <coughs> like at every single, uh, you know, stop because people were just getting sick of it. I thought it was going to be like a magical ride, you know? Yeah. And I don't be know. All the whole way. I mean, well, the thing about it is just, I kind of <laughs> feel like that's why I don't think <coughs> this is way out of bounds because I could see... A teenage kid yeah like amping people up to a point they're like yeah yeah bro we're gonna do that shit and then like but once the rubber hits the road yeah and you like, actually nah, have to do it and then yeah. you're like you know you're walking through the fucking some fucking desert or some shit like that or some you know remote area where there's nothing around it's like man we got to find a village like to sleep and like find something to eat people will be like man this sucks this sucks yeah. even worse than my regular life which probably sucked a lot there could be something to these stories that probably kind of believe in them because had the church made these stories up the children's pilgrimages would have grown as they went it would have been fucking and then there would have been fucking like i said the sea would have parted you would have seen they would have said oh yeah and people saw jesus over the rainbow you know wherever they went and It'd be more embellished. It wouldn't be like, yeah, it was a children's crusade and it failed. The church wouldn't make tell a story like that. Well, they did, but they spun it in a different way, which I'm just yeah, about okay. to tell right, you. Yeah. Jeff Yard says, Jenny, your scam impersonation made me think of drunk history. <coughs> oh, I love that show. And I imagine <coughs> that scene played out by Don Cheadle and Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> oh my God, that's awesome. But that's what I mean. That's kind of what I was thinking of the whole time. That's like that's how they. That's how Philip was talking to his scholarly advisors about these children that came to him with a letter from Jesus. I just kind of feel like that's probably how it went down. Not in the not in the vernacular that I use, obviously, but similar sentiment. So um, so yeah. So obviously nobody knows what happened to Stephen of Cloa. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong. Um, and his followers. Um, last anyone heard, they were in Marseille. Some of them might have gotten a ship to somewhere. And again, there's a lot of stories that some of them got on a ship. Like some merchants were like, hey, you guys, we'll take you to the Holy Land for free. Get on the ship, all 5,000 of you or whatever. And then they're like, woohoo, free merchandise. And then yeah. they sold them, sold them into in Egypt or Tunisia into yeah. slavery, which totally sounds like some shit that probably would have happened. So I don't think that's that crazy either. So that totally might have happened too. And then the kids were like, what the fuck? And they yeah. were like, God hey. willed it. Yeah. Guess God hates you, kids. <laughs> yeah, it was probably that kind of situation. But yeah, so I mean, there were some shitty people back then. So, uh, so yeah. So I, I Who don't knows? They had interesting lives after that, though. Uh, Working in rich people's houses instead of out in the fucking field in a pig slop. I mean, in some cases, it might have been better than what they came yeah. from. Probably I mean, up. in some cases, it probably was not, but, you know, it might have been better. Um, and obviously, a lot of them died from elements or died in shipwrecks or died, you know, from various other things. Some of them probably just went back home or yeah. settled in some city and just got a job and just had a regular fucking peasant ass life. You know what I mean? So but it's like they don't really know what happened to all of them. You know what I mean? Because they <coughs> dispersed along the way, like while they were doing their <coughs> pilgrimage or whatever. The thing about it was that even though the Children's Crusade, or, you know, even though it wasn't really one thing, it was just like a whole series of things, even though it was considered in the popular imagination a horrible failure, the kids didn't even make it to the Holy Land at all. Yeah. So it's, and that was kind of their whole state of purpose, right? right? We're gonna go and convert the Muslims. They didn't do that. Never, they didn't, they didn't even get there. They didn't get there. Um, 
They but can't get out of Europe. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> which like it's kind of pitiful. But like yeah. I said, they're just a bunch of kids. And honestly, the adults that were trained soldiers and stuff, they didn't do much better. So you can't really right. shit on the kids too much. Um, you know. So even though it was seen as a failure and it was like really sad and everything like that, um, honestly, it kind of. It kind of paved the way. I don't know if it paved the way necessarily for the Fifth Crusade, but one thing that it did do was Pope Innocent the Third, because he saw how jazzed everybody was about it, like the Children's Crusade and how everyone was talking about it, and whether or not he actually met with Nicholas and stuff like that. Um, he was like, "Oh well, obviously, a lot of people are really passionate about this crusading thing, so we need to do more of this." You know what I mean? So he's like, we're going to do the Fifth Crusade. And that was maybe one of the, you know, one of the uh, things that was like an impetus for the Fifth Crusade. And uh, the thing about it, too, was that after that, the Pope initiated a new rule whereby if you were a peasant, if you were really poor or unsuitable for battle, if you were really old or, you know, crippled or something like that and you couldn't fight, you could buy out your crusading vows with money you know what i mean because yeah. before it's like like you did crusade but you donated right right right, right. Like so it was like that so and then they would use the money to hire professional warriors to do the crusade yeah, in, in your so stand, you'd get yeah. the same sin forgiveness yeah but not have to go on the crusade you well, just yeah, had to pay you you, sponsored, you had sponsored. to pay you yeah. sponsored a fighter. You had to pay yeah. like what you would have paid if you'd gone yourself. Right, like yeah. for your weapons or yeah. whatever. You paid for a mercenary. Right. Yeah, essentially is what you were doing. So that's kind of like so that was one thing that this kind of that's engendered. A good it really is. I mean the church You know the church took a cut. They man, they came up with like all the best grifts. Yeah. To be honest. Uh they yeah. still kinda do, but like I said, back in those days everybody just you give fell me five hundred gold. I'll take fucking thirty of the gold and the rest of it will send a fucking mercenary to fight in your place. I mean And you will both go to heaven. So it's, and everybody's it's like, good wow. that even he goes to heaven because you gave him the money. Yeah, so that's a, yeah, heaven. so it was right. like two for you're, one. Yeah, you're saving his soul too. Bogo. Yeah. I don't know how that would think of it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so like here, that. take my money, and then both of us can go to heaven. Yeah. And that's I'm sure that's probably how they sold it, too. Sure. You're going to go to heaven, and this person who's actually going on the crusade in your state. Yeah, yeah. You're paying for his shit. Yeah. It's like, it's like giving money <coughs> for like somebody to do like a fucking <coughs> 4K run <coughs> for charity. <coughs> Damn. Oh, my God. Are you, are you all right? Yeah. You sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Drink more alcohol. No. Uh, It'll help. It'll backfire. You think? Yeah. How many have you had? Just one. Oh, that okay. was pretty stiff. All right. I'm on my second one. Yeah. But yeah, so um, as I mentioned, up until about 1977, I kind of feel like there wasn't a mainstream conception of maybe the Children's Crusade didn't happen the way that it had always been portrayed. Um, and I, like I said, I think the main point of contention was not that it didn't happen, was, but that it was led or primarily comprised of <coughs> children. Because the thing about it was that chronicles from the time, um, you know, the actual time around when it actually occurred in 1212, did not mention anyone's <coughs> ages. And you would think that if there was an entire crusade, quote unquote, comprised of children, that contemporary people would mention it. But they did not. So I kind of suspect that if these two kids did exist and did lead these pilgrimages, they might have been older than later extrapolations would have you believe because they're both seen as 12 year olds hmm. and some later scholars say it could be that they were older and that later christian writers made them 12 years old because they pointed out that jesus ran away from home when he was 12 years old and he also was poor and had nothing so that maybe they were trying to 
make, make it, like, it like the the Christ child <coughs> narrative. Yeah. Like a twelve year old that was running away from home with yeah. no money. Yeah, maybe. You know, and so maybe they were trying to do that. So I'm not saying that those two kids didn't exist. I'm just saying that they maybe weren't necessarily twelve years old. And I'm saying that most of their followers probably were not children because there just aren't any contemporary because there were some chronicles that came out like just a year later. Like and some that came out only a few years after. And they didn't really mention the ages of yeah. anybody so it could be because there was a, a kind of a thing at the time where it was very common for peasants and stuff like that to go on these kind of pilgrimages and they would go from village to village and they would beg for food and sleep in people's barns and stuff like that and saying yeah we're going to the holy land and we're going to take it back and stuff like that um, but they were adults so it could be that this did happen, but it wasn't all children, as people say. Because here's the thing. There was a chronicle that was written in 1213, just a year after this happened. And this chronicle says that the Crusaders, and this is a quote, left the plows or carts which they were driving and the flocks which they were pasturing, which kind of suggests that they were older farmers. Like, maybe right. they were teenagers. Yeah. But, you know... And there are kind of things, too, where there's been a lot of controversy about the word. And I'm, I didn't take Latin, so I'm not really sure how to pronounce this. But there's a word, um, puerti or pueri. Now, this could mean either child or it could mean the powerless. Yeah. Um, and a lot of scholars, too, have pointed out that in the Middle Ages, like medieval writers, if they said, like, child or they used a Latin word that kind of maybe meant child, it didn't necessarily mean that. Like, it could have meant somebody that was up to 28 years old. Right. Huh. So, so they're not real clear on what age the leaders of it were or the followers were. I kind of find it interesting that no contemporary reports mention that it was all a bunch of children. You would think <coughs> that they would mention that. Right. And like I said, I'm not saying that children weren't involved because I'm sure they were. Because look, I think like even in the first four crusades or the first crusade, you know, when they were just <coughs> recruiting anybody, I think like some kids or teenagers went on that because they would take anybody that would pay. Yeah. So I imagine... That maybe some 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds got in on that action. So I don't really think it's that crazy to think that maybe a 12 year old or a 14 year old or whatever was along on this and maybe even led it. So when we say child, children's crusade, it may not be child. The word that they're using in the original language may not actually mean child. It might mean junior. Like yeah. junior. No, yeah, because there's yeah. kind of a lot of ambiguity about yeah. the words that they used. Right. And because, you know, yeah, the word, um, that word could mean children. Yeah. But it could also mean, like I said, it could somebody mean of lower status. somebody of lower status. Yeah. Because they did kind of use it as like a social class right. word as well. Like somebody that was in the lower classes. Yeah. So it could have just been like a popular uprising of poor people. Yeah junior members of society which like i said that's pretty um and that's pretty uh that tracks because there was a lot of popular movements like that going because like i said after the fourth crusade you know it was a horrible failure there was a pervading view in europe that well <coughs> all of these professional soldiers failed so maybe we need to get back to God and God favors the poor and maybe yeah. we need to do this shit yeah, because have... they're not doing it. Yeah. A so, crusade of lower ranking people. Right. So I kind of feel like that was kind of a popular um, it would be thought the people, at the time. The people's crusade. Yeah. yeah. And so I kind of feel like it's... Not one of knights. And, 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 right. And, or a civilian crusade. It might right. be that. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's yeah. just kind of like... And later they go back and change the ages of the leaders to 12. Yeah, which, like I said, might have gone along with, like, the Christ story. Yeah. Joseph said, uh, what's your source for information on the First Crusade? I think the First Crusade did have professional... Yeah, they did as well. But I'm just saying that 
they also they weren't picky. <coughs> yeah, if you had professional soldiers too, yeah. but they would kind of like, oh my god, damn, you all right? You yeah. die? Holy crap! A real dry cough. Yeah, that's bad. But yeah, so that's the thing. It's not so much that, and I kind of feel like too that there was a. I think I mentioned earlier that during this time period, there's a very common um, perception that God favored the poor and that God favored children because they were innocent. So it could be that later writers, later Christian writers, might have made, you know, made the Crusaders younger to tie in with the whole innocence <coughs> narrative <coughs> the you catholic, know <coughs> the catholic church had 1500 years of uh 1500 years time to go back in history and tweak things to be more favorable to their ideology they did it all the time they went back and tweaked roman history a lot you know they tweaked josephus to include jesus in there yeah big but time. it's obviously that's probably one of the most famous yeah later extrapolation. It's called, it's called interpolation. Yes. You're going back and inserting something into old records because you think it's supposed to be there. It's like, look, <laughs> you forgot to mention Jesus. We're just going to write yeah. that. It could be that they like that. mistranslated Children's Crusade. It might have actually been People's Crusade or Civilian Crusade, something like that. But they think it means children, so they go back and put in, they're 12 years old. The leaders yeah. are 12. It may not have been that way. And like I said, I'm not saying that the leaders of these um, movements didn't exist. I mean, they might have, but I just don't know if they were that young. They very well might have been, because like I said, 12-year-old was, <coughs> it's still a kid, but they wouldn't have seen it the same as we see it nowadays. They didn't have childhood. Basically. So I kind of suspect they might have been older, though. Yeah. Childhood and, is a new invention. It the, is, yeah. Even in the 18, 19, early 1900s, there were no thing. There's no such thing as really as children. Like I said, once you were old enough to like do shit on your own, yeah, they're wearing you clothes, did you shit kinda, on your own. Yeah, they kind of considered you to be an adult. They're sitting there smoking yeah. cigarettes. Well, and you're shit. a grown up now. Yeah, get a job. Guy's like six and he's smoking cigarettes. And shit. <laughs> Except for a six year old fucking yeah. smoking and shit like that. That's kind of funny. And no telling. For all we know, they people may have had sex with them. There's just no way of knowing. Oh, I'm sure they did. Yeah. I mean, you know they did. Come on. Well, the pedos did. Yeah. I don't even, know how, how widespread it was. Well, that's the thing. It's just, I kind of feel like if it was more permissive, yeah. I kind of feel like even people, I don't know, like with people that weren't even pedos, they'd just be like, ah, well, okay, it's all right. Lewis Everyone else is doing it. Into it. Did we do, did a show about him. I don't know. I we did, yeah. We did, yeah. I think we did, yeah. Him and Alice Liddell. <coughs> yeah, he's the author that did... Uh, Alice, Alice in Wonderland. Wonderland. He uh, followed little girls around in the train stations and gave them presents and shit and taught, wrote on his diary about them all the time. Uh, and he had, they evidently found some photos that were cherub photos and nudes and stuff. They don't, they don't know, ne, I don't know if they're necessarily... He'd dress them up, you know, take pictures Yeah, it's of like them. it's... By today's standard, it's pretty weird. I don't yeah. really know if... Nobody really knows. Yeah, nobody really knows. it Because it, you can't go back in time and like... Yeah into the cultural context it seems creepy to us nowadays yeah. but maybe it didn't seem creepy to them i don't know i kind of feel like it did though because i kind of feel like her mom was just kind of like hey yeah, you go to the train station and make friends with all the little homeless girls you know yeah which is do really photo shoots and stuff weird a little strange tammy says 16 year olds would lie about their ages to join the <coughs> army in world war one and world war two so maybe kids back then did the same yeah and like i said i kind of feel like if you were 16 back then you were an adult yeah so i don't really know and i don't think in the medieval era they would have differentiated they wouldn't have cared no i don't think so they judge people by how big they were like i said i think the only reason that both of these kids happened to be 12 years old was maybe yeah. because of the jesus thing could i be. mean they could very well have been 12 but you know could be the church went back there and changed it to that that's kind of what I'm thinking. To well, because of some theory that they had that was long gone now. Yeah, and like I said, I think they were trying to bolster the because I I have to say a lot of Christian writers or chroniclers at the time, um, they kind <coughs> of condemned the Children's Crusade a little bit. 
I think they kind of like tried to straddle the line because they were like, oh, well, isn't it awesome that these kids did some shit that like grownups wouldn't do? But they also had to condemn it because it wasn't sanctioned by the church. You know what I mean? So it's like they're just doing shit on their own. So you know what I mean? So I, so they kind of and, and they also they said because it failed, then that meant that God wasn't with them. Yeah. So I kind of feel like that they went along those lines, too. Um, CB said they could have been just trying to protect the children from the evil in the world at the time. Yeah, and I will say, too, uh, in the defense of maybe this crusade being comprised of a lot of actual children, there are some accounts, I don't know if these are from uh, or contemporary or a little bit later, of a lot of parents locking their kids up because they didn't want them to go. Right. You know what I mean? So it could be that there was a popular movement of like among kids. Yeah. Of yeah, we're going to go and convert the Muslims. Like I said, it didn't happen, obviously. There may have been ulterior motives if it for the kids if it was uh if that was the case. It could be that they were just it was acceptable religiously acceptable way of running away from home. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. I'm so pious, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Yeah, I mean, some kids were probably just like, man, yeah. my parents suck, and I don't really want to fucking yeah. live in this fucking life. Yeah, you I'm going to you know, put myself in the hands of God. They'd have had all kinds of ways of describing it. <coughs> Phantom says, doesn't India have arranged marriages still between they, children and adult males? They used to, but I don't know if they do. I don't know about nowadays. The weird thing, I, did, I thought arranged marriages were, were like a thing of the past. No. But in some countries, they still do it. Oh, yeah. The Islamic world's like that. Yeah. The parents kind of arrange it. Which is now, you crazy. Don't, you could say no, but you, I think you're, at first your, your, your hookups come from your parents. They're hooking you up. There's no dating. That's so weird to me. Yeah. Like, I know it's not weird to them because they grew up like that, but I'd be like, yeah, I don't yeah. want my parents like picking my fucking... Well, I think they just do the introduction. Mm. They don't force you to marry them. They just do the introduction. If that doesn't work out, then they'll introduce you to another one. Although I guess parents over here are just kind of like, hey, we're just like, we we know these people and they have yeah. this really great son. Yeah, Maybe like you that. should go out. He's a doctor. Yeah. You know, it might be like that. <laughs> it may not be that way everywhere in the Middle East with all classes. I don't know. John Burke says arranged marriages are still very much a thing, including here in the U.S. Yeah, I mean, I guess among some cultures. Like I said, it's weird <coughs> to me. Well, uh, yeah, well, uh, real they're, they're religious kinda, Mormons. They're kind of weirdos, they, though. Yeah. Oh, it's Ash. What about him? Yeah. He's yeah, here. He's in there. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I thought that name yeah, looked yeah. familiar. How are you doing, man? Yeah. Haven't seen you in a while. We know Ash. He's in, <coughs> yeah. in, in real life. Um, so, yeah. It's a, but, yeah, every time I hear about that, because remember you've been following that chick on Instagram. Yeah, we, that's like a. Um, me and Saad are trying to figure out. Well, we found out some more about. Yeah, that. he has a so, he has a friend Saad that's in he's it's in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And so they talk about this. They've been talking about this chick on Instagram. She's on Instagram walking around. She's all in burqa. You can't see her, and she's just got this huge fake ass and big old titties. You never see her face really. She does have a really big. And nice then ass. she's walking around in real elegant places, and there's all these advertisements, and she's supposed to be a matchmaker. Like, you know, I got a girl for you. This is what she looks like. But blah, 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 blah. if you contact, have your mom contact me and I'll you can set it up. I get a commission if you guys get married. And it's like a matchmaker. Maybe but I should the thing get is, is like, The thing is, though, is that fucking she'd post a, uh, a video and I'd go in the comments, man. Just listen to the comments. are fucking hilarious because you can translate them all from Arabic. <clears throat> Send him one the other way. And I says, dude, man, fucking... Well, he she's, you didn't know what it was. You know what it You're was. like, what is going on what here? What is exactly going on? Says, well, she, she's a matchmaker. But then I said her something because you know that shit's kind of fishy though. Because I I think based on what she says, she's just trying to get clicks. Well, obviously and, she's trying to get clicks because yeah, she's yeah. like wiggling her big old ass. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff. No, but I'm going, and I'm just like, and I'm going, but dude, because he's showing it to me. I'm like, what? It, how does this yeah, work? But I said, dude, uh, uh, Instagram, him and Sad had a whole discussion. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna like, but Instagram isn't isn't monetized she doesn't make any money off those clicks she's got to be selling something and he comes back and he goes yeah you know they, it keeps giving the phone number over and over again and, and I said how much you want to bet that's an escort service and he's like yeah it probably it is it might be a download it's, 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 it's a um, it's a ploy 
of plausible deniability. Because she, she yeah, it, it, she, she looks like she's an escort, probably. Yeah, because like if you were just selling your services for matchmaking, yeah, like why would you necessarily put Instagram videos of yourself like shaking your big old ass? Yeah, well, she's kind of like like the, it the, gets attention. The, 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 I, the, the, you know, she, she's the bait. Right, it gets attention. Yeah, I'll give you that. Supposed to be like the bait. And then, but uh, the more he explained it, I was just yeah, kind of like, the, I don't know, man. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. and we were like. This is very confusing to me. Yeah. I'll see if I can find her. It's very confusing to me. Well, it's like that whole thing. Like, I know. I know that other shit's different. But I was talking to this dude, like, a few years back (coughs) from India. And it blew his mind that me and you lived together for years and years. And weren't married, yeah. And weren't married. Like, that blew his mind. I was just like, yeah, it's just, it's a thing. And, like, nobody thinks about it here. But I guess over there it was, like, a big deal. That's her. You never see her face. She just posts these little... Actually, you see her face on that one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But rarely does she show her face. And, see, there's an ad over it. And it's, and it's, I I can't read them. So I says, what did that one say? And he's saying, well, he's got a girl. She's describing a girl that's looking for... To be become a second wife, that kind of shit, and she wants to elope as the second wife. And then, and it, like yeah. he was, because they were doing audio messages back. Because yeah, yeah. can speaking like really good yeah, English. Yeah, yeah. he's a so, doctor. He's becoming a doctor. Yeah, he's a doctor. Yeah. So he can speak really good English. Yeah. So, so I was listening to the audio messages, and he was explaining. Yeah. This whole like wife and second wife thing and it's yeah. like these are not for first wives yeah these are she's a service offering yeah. second wives yeah and i was just like oh my god evidently like, a lot of the girls so complicated evidently a lot of the girls over there don't want to be the first wife they want to be the second wife <laughs> they don't want to be the first wife <laughs> <laughs> and i was like why do they want to be the second wife this is because the second wife's more recreational she's the recreational she, she gets to wife. have more fun than the first wife the first wife's raising the kids. The second wife, she can elope. Yeah, the first wife gets the boring yeah, she wife gets to, yeah, job. And she, get, and she, she has to do she, all the she wife She gets shit. to go on all the vacations and all the... She's all like the, the mistress. Like the mistress, basically. But, yeah. Right. Tom's looking for a second wife. That's why he's on that. No. No. It's just, just that just uh, that came up in my feed, and I showed it to showed it to Saad. Too. I'm the, more than enough wife for anybody, yeah, I, honestly. I came up in my feed, and I said, <laughs> I said, I said, I said, fucking... Saad, so what the fuck is she talking about? I can't read yeah, that. Yeah, we couldn't figure it out. I can't read that. We're like, what is she doing? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, he... he it took him a, a minute to figure it out, too. But now we've now we've come to the conclusion... That it's an ex, it's an escort service. She, she's, but she's trying to be sneaky. Yeah, it's it's plausible deniability. So many layers. It's yeah, like you can call her and she'll set up a meeting and you'll meet with her and discuss a marriage. And the marriage may not actually happen, and you might get something out of that discussion. That's probably what it is. That's crazy. So the authorities. I guess I don't it. really like think about it, but yeah. yeah. Ash says the living together prior to marriage is still huge in many parts of the world. Yeah, I didn't realize it was that. Like, I knew that there were some countries where they were kind of, like, not cool about it, but I didn't realize it was, like, such a huge deal, like, in other parts of the world, until I was talking to this dude from India, and he was just like, it's mind opening. Like, you could, like, you try to explain it. Yeah, like, you try to explain it. He didn't know that that existed. And he just, like, couldn't understand it. I'm like, but, I was like, it's like we're married, but, I mean, we're married now, but it's like we weren't then. And it's just kind of like, yeah, we've lived together for, like, a really long time, and... It's just, why is that a big deal? And it's like, I didn't get it. So, but he was making a huge deal about it. And I was just like, dude, like, calm down. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he says there are still states with cohabitation laws on the books. They just aren't enforced. Yeah, yeah, that's true. In the U.S. I mean, there's a lot of fucking stupid laws on the books in the U.S., which I guess if they still wanted to enforce them, they could. But yeah, like, they, I don't think they would enforce bigamy laws. There'd have to be a complaint. Well, Cause some, a lot of laws like that that are not, that you're not like, you know, it's not violent. Yeah. Um, I kind of feel like you'd have to have a complaint. Yeah. Well, they would still like, if, if you went to another state and married someone else, I mean, you couldn't probably couldn't do that nowadays because they'd pull it up in two seconds. They'd be like, what the fuck are you trying to do? You have most of them here that have more than one wife. I yeah. don't know how that's handled. I don't know how American law handles it. I'm not sure it. either. Well, no, how they do, as far as I'm aware, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I thought in states like Utah and stuff like that that would have a, a large Mormon population, <coughs> what they do 
they recognize the first marriage. Yeah. They don't legally recognize any of the other ones, but they don't tell you that you can't do that. Yeah, so I kind of, so it's not like yeah. I I kind of feel like they they marry the first person like legally, but then like after that it's just like ceremonial. Yeah. And it's like to them it matters, but legally if you try to like pull a claim on that legally, like it wouldn't <coughs> have any standing. I think that's how they handle it. As yeah. far as I'm aware, I'm not really sure if I'm right about that, but I thought that was the thing what Saad told me it blew my mind. The second, the, a lot of the girls, a lot of the girls want to be the second wife, so they don't have to do all the heavy, heavy lifting. And the arrangement is is to elope, because that was evidently in, one, in some of the the ads. And that means you don't have to tell any of the families, or you don't have to tell your wife that you got a second wife. <laughs> you know, honey, I'm going on a business trip. You know, that kind of shit. And probably what she gets out of it is she gets her own house, right? And that dude's not there all the time. Probably just the fucking vacations and shit. He's probably with the first wife most of the time, so she's kind of like kept in, in the because she don't have to like put up with his stupid you put up ass, his ass all the time. like all the time. Right. You don't have to clean up after him and pick his socks right. up and so he basically take care of his basically you're, you know. And, and the the Western interpretation of that would be that you're the mistress and he's hooked you up with a house. Which all right, like I can see why that would be a lot more. Yeah, um, that way you, know. you have to deal with that dude. He's only over maybe a couple times a month. That sounds nice. <coughs> yeah. I mean, you could just like get nice and drunk, like when you knew he was coming over. Yeah. <laughs> like once or twice a when month. He's not around. I don't know. And she yeah. could just like do it. Yeah. maybe I me mean, she could sneak and like do whatever she wanted. I would guess, and she gets paid for it. I'm not sure how much they can go out in public without a chaperone. I don't know. It used to be that they had to be chaperoned. I don't know okay, if that's that still blows. Around. I don't like that. Yeah. Then you kind of be a prisoner. But Victor says Tom was saving pegging for marriage. Oh, Victor sent me a f- only rich guys can get married more than once though. Victor sent me a photo earlier on fa- on Messenger. Yeah. That um <laughs> that had a picture of a guy with a shirt yeah. that said I'm saving I'm saving pegging for marriage or something like that. No, <laughs> he said sure, it to yeah, me and I was like, Oh my god. I was I have to send that to Tom. That would be super funny. Man. And he'd just be like, Man, bitch, shut up. Yeah, he's like, Man, you're <laughs> these women are fucking crazy. We're not crazy. Okay. We just have our own thing. Is, is, is it? Ash, what, wait. Okay. Ash says, fascinating conversation. I don't actually know how that works because polygamy is illegal in all states as far as I know, but Utah is a different world. As far as I know, like I said, I think they recognize legally the first marriage. You can marry as many people as you want, like, ceremonially, but I don't think they recognize it legally. So, yeah. like, if you, no even in Utah... Yeah, and, like, if nobody complains, then no one's going to press any charges. But, like, it, even in Utah, like, if you went somewhere and it would be like, hey, I'm going to... If you try to do something, like, legal with the person, that's not going to work out. Yeah, like, with your first like, wife, it will, but... And evidently, you know, Orthodox Mormonism doesn't... Evidently doesn't to- doesn't allow it anymore. It's breakaway sects of it. Yeah. have the multiple marriage, which that's the originally what it was. It, the Mormonism was kind of modeled after Islam in a certain way, you know what I mean? We can, yeah. Some people have called Joseph Smith, uh, who is their prophet, uh, the American Muhammad. Yeah. And there was a lot of, a lot of parallels. I mean, there's a lot of similarities. Lot of yeah. That's where he got most of his ideas from. <coughs> his, his life was kind of like that. <coughs> On the run at war with the United States, he had his own armies and shit, bunches of fucking... The only thing that was different, though, is... That, he was marrying a lot of his followers' wives, and you know, and it was bizarre. They, I think they overthrew him once. I don't remember. I think they overthrew him. There was a riot at one time. I had to go back. Like I said, I, I kind of wanted to do a show about that yeah. too, like about the yeah. history of Mormonism, yeah. because I don't think we've done one about that. No, we should. I think it's on my list, but I'll and, write uh, it down again anyway. Yeah, and uh, it's that wild. Is a it's kind of it's kind of some story. parallels with. Uh, Scientology in terms of ideas. Oh, big. That's what I, I was just gonna say. That yeah. if you're a real good Mormon, you can level up, and God will make you a god with your own planet. Eventually, if you get higher up the bridge, it's a lot. Of, it's, I don't want my own planet. That sounds was, like too yeah, much work. Yeah, and it was uh, a lot of uh, symbolism, and their rituals are pretty cool. And a lot of their stuff is kind of very Masonic. It looks a lot of their stuff kind of looks real Masonic. Like, and that was around the time you know the Masons and the Rosicrucians and shit. He's just, and there's a lot of spirit spiritualism in it. You know, because that was big at the time that Joseph Smith was around. 
Yeah, actually, so, so, so kind of a cult. So, like in Islam, a man can have <coughs> multiple wives, but the wives beyond the first aren't recognized beyond the first. Yeah, I think like from a legal standpoint. In the United States. In the United States. Not not over there. Yeah. Just because, like I said, bigamy is still a thing. Like, but like I said, no one's gonna press charges. Yeah, they come over here and they bring all. They, they might be bringing all their wives. You know, and like I said, if no one's complaining, them, so there must be some. They're not complaining. Like they can technically charge you with it if somebody complains, right. but no one's going to complain yeah. because you know what I mean. CB said, "I was told as long as you don't do it with a child, family member, or an animal, it's okay." <laughs> well, and as long as everyone is consenting, then yeah, I mean, same kind of thing, same kind of thing. Yeah, he says in Islam, a man can have four wives. Yeah. Like I said, I can't I imagine. Three, but might be I can't imagine. <coughs> and the thing about it is like, you know, and, and people say it's like, oh, well, women aren't allowed to have four husbands. It's like, why the fuck would you want four husbands? God, one is more than enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds exhausting. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? It sounds exhausting. We have that here, though, where a guy's got multiple wives and the wives have multiple fucking men and wives of their own. It's called swinging. Well, yeah. It's called the Swingers Club. Well, I mean, it's not really, because I kind of feel like, <laughs> well, there's a difference between people you just go randomly fuck and yeah. they don't live with you or anything like yeah. that, and, like, someone that's a wife. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, if you get in a car accident, the person that you're going to call or whatever. it's that, That's two different things. Yeah. So, you know, it's somebody that you're just, like, I mean, banging on the side. Though. I've seen videos eh, where both yeah. the wives are with the, with the husband. It's not around. swinging, it's poly. Yeah, it says, yeah, yeah, poly, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. polyamory. Which, like I said, it sounds exhausting. Yeah. I can't put up with more than one person at a time. So, so I don't really <coughs> There's know. a funny video where a, fuck, a, guy, a guy, Muslim guy, is fucking talking to the camera, and behind him two two girls at the table, the d- dining room table in the house, and he goes, he says to the first wife, he says, I, I said, he says, you came back and you told me you wanted to spend more time with your friend. All right? <laughs> spend more time with your friend. So what I do? I married her, you know. Welcome to my family. And she's like, what, what, and the wife said, that's not what I, first wife said, that's not what I meant, though. <laughs> I want to spend well, more, I guess she I really spend more time, any, uh, I want to spend more time, time with, with, my, with my girlfriend. And he goes, so I, <laughs> he says, so I married well in my family. It's fucking funny. I thought it was hilarious. He wasn't in the Middle East, though, I don't think. This I think is, that guy was in this Russia. This is my fucked up face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Phantom said we already did a show about the Mormons. Oh, yeah, I think we did. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did, didn't we? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <coughs> See, I forget. But there's a lot of shit within the Mormon religion that we could make a whole okay. topic. The White Salamander Letters. I think, did we cover that? We did talked we, about we it. Talk about I it? think okay. I remember talking about that, but yeah. Yeah, there, there's a bunch of stuff. CB says, about. watch the TV show Sister Wives. It's a mind fuck. Oh, yeah, man. I told yeah. you. I don't know. I don't really get it, man. Like I said, I can't put up with more than one person at once, and no bitch is going to take my place, that's for sure. Well, it's the same, well, the rea- even the Raelians were doing that. Remember the alien cult? Yeah, that guy had his head. All of it, you know what? Angel squad. You know what's in common? Like yeah. what, the one thing that's in common with all that, it was uh, cons- uh, the concept was come up with by dudes. Yeah, dudes coming up with. I, I, I should have these ten wives. No, no chick would ever come up with <laughs> <Yeah>. that shit. <laughs> Not ever. So, uh, yeah. so only dudes come up with that bullshit. <coughs> yeah, I want fifteen wives. Man, my my cold's getting to me. I'm gonna have to stop the show, Jim. Yeah, I mean, well, it's ten o'clock. You yeah. need to get some rest. I know. Take some cold medicine. Yeah. And get some sleep. You yeah. know. All right. So we've been on for quite a while. Tom's not feeling too good. Yeah. So we're gonna wrap it up for this evening. So thanks everybody for dropping by and hanging out with us. This was a fascinating discussion. Um, we are going to be back on Friday night for the sidetrack show. So hopefully you guys can join us for that. We're gonna drink and talk about whatever pops into our <coughs> pointy little heads <coughs> and that's always a good time so uh so yeah thanks everybody for dropping by we will see you guys again on friday night good night